tonight on eight and a half bit. We roll some dice, counsel some losers, and shoot some guns. Welcome, friends of all designs, to episode 262 of 8 and a Half Bit. I'm your host, Paul, and joining today are my good friend, Sam. Hello. And James. Hello. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? I'm going well. That's Quite good. well, yes. Uh, and as I try to say the th- games that we mentioned in the title, we will be discussing Dicey Dungeons, uh, Eliza, and Iron Fury. Mm-hmm. The weird thing is, so this episode is really late. Mm. This episode is late because last recording, we said, well... We've each got one game to talk about and we don't even care about it. So, uh, and the news is terrible. And the news is still terrible. But it's, it is like <laughs> but at least slightly more less terrible. Eh, there's there just anything more interesting? terrible news. Yeah, mm. eh, eh, I still, uh, like most of these things, I'm just going to shrug off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Short show. And that's yeah. it. Thank then, you for joining us on 8 and a half But then today, <laughs> today I started playing three new games. Yes. Oh, there we go. Two of which are classics and one is, I've already played it. I just mm. was checking the Switch port and it's a good port so far. But I've literally put in Ten minutes into that one, so yeah. I can't talk about that too much. Um, anyway, how have things been? Yeah, things have been well. Been yeah. very busy the last few weeks. Yes, just working getting, on your video game. Working on two video games. Two. Yes. Um, well, but, I mean, the other one's just a reskin of the other one. It doesn't really count. <laughs> no, no, like, like no, no. Like, like, three video games. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Well, there's like you know my day job video uh-huh. game, and then my personal. Oh video yeah, game, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's the second person. Yeah, video I, I was, game. I was just trying to have a slide at your yeah. personal work again. I forgot yeah. that there was another yeah. job you work on yes, as well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so trying three. to make money, trying to survive, yeah. trying so to use your skills to the benefit of something. P- to pooping. To po- well, yeah, that's really, well, yeah, that's really what, what motivates me is like, I love the idea of helping someone poop. With like, video games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You should really just record your voice into a video game though, because as we know back in my uh, teen years, that's just what caused me to want to share. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, are you in the bathroom again? It's like, yeah, just yes. whatever you talk to me. <laughs> That was an odd association. Yeah, but, yeah. But maybe, yeah. maybe it just had to shit a lot. Did maybe. I just blamed you. Pavlov didn't really test that one out. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, yeah, so in Good Things with Your Game, mm. uh, you there was a little exhibition in Brisbane yes. uh, last weekend. Go 243? 423. 423. Yeah, I always forget. Yeah. Appar- I, I asked what it meant, and the only thing I could give was a theory that they think it used to be in room 423 uh, when yeah, it started. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is like a nice history to it. Mm. Anyway, it was sort of a, a local meetup, show, uh, local developers, uh, both amateur and professionals, showing stuff off. Um, I only spent a little bit of time mm. there, but I was happy to see when the po- photos got posted. I happened to be there when they're taking all the main photos. Yeah. And I'm all, I'm all over them. Yeah, Paul, it looks like you are a very Paul. important part. It's like, of oh, look show. at him! He's yeah. here. He's here all the time. I'm like, nah, I was there for yeah. forty minutes. Yeah. No, I appreciated um, you coming down. No, it was good. You had a good showing of your game. Yeah. So we were. It was a long day because it was got there about eight o'clock and found it was about an hour early. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And then we're there. Was at about four thirty-five or something like that. But. Yeah, I was really showing off Sky Squadron and had generally pretty good reception. And you went up on uh, stage to be a star. Oh, yeah, I forgot I did that. It was very exciting. <laughs> yeah. I was wooting. Yeah. Was I all right? I didn't watch. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I felt really sorry for the presenters Just, yes. uh-huh. because they there was like three, two or three people that were interviewing devs mm-hmm. like the whole day. And I, yeah. I felt bad. I felt it's bad tough. For them. It's exhausting. Oh, and yeah. the thing is, like, as we have now have a long history of interviewing both on the record and off the record devs, you know, developers aren't necessarily the most um, uh, articulate. Well, no, articulate's not where I'm going for. They're just not necessarily the most outward. Like the the. A lot of them are introverted. Yeah. Uh, they don't necessarily have a lot of possess- Like they aren't salesmen. And you get them up and like you go up and you say, okay, this is a passion project. You've been working on it for eight years. It's like, what's so good about it? And they go like, oh, well, yeah, it's coming around okay. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Without um, fail, most devs are self-patronizing to yes, an extreme yes. point. And I, I've That's what to, it is. When, when I've been doing formal stuff, I had to what, have to watch myself a bit because especially like with James and Michael, and I've noticed Michael doesn't, doesn't always seem to pick up that I'm just mainly giving you shit. Um, mm. It's like, I say so much like, yeah, downplaying and underhanded comments and everything about the games and everything. And that's just 
friend. That's Aussie. That's Aussie. Yeah. That's friendly. <laughs> but sometimes, then, especially when it then goes into the written word, it really does not contribute. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Paul really hates our games. <laughs> it's like, boy, he fucking yeah. hates. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Um, yeah. So sometimes you mm. got to watch that when you're not just doing it with friends. Yes. Uh, but uh, yes, you're right. Most people are pretty self-deprecating yeah. when it mm. comes to their work. But yeah, it was cool. It was um, really cool to see people play through like the core loop and get it. Mm-hmm. Like it was, you know, we, we've been in like a development bubble for so long. Like, so they're finally coming out of that and going right. Here's a bunch because we've had actually quite a few downloads now. Um, so on that. Um, People can get in the yeah, open so beta if you want to jump test flight on, it's on iOS. Yeah, iOS open beta. Um, just go to trickshotdev.com uh, and you can just get it there. It's just a It's link. called Sky Squadron. It's called Sky Squadron. You can also Google that. It's also a Japanese pop band. Why isn't it called Top Cat? Because um, it's not about cats anymore. Oh. But don't you still play a cat? No. You're actually mainly playing a koala. Oh. Yeah, it's all Australian animals now. But there were some cats now. there, wasn't there? Uh, isn't the, isn't the icon still a cat? Yeah, cats. the icon's still a cat. That might change at this okay. point. Yeah. So, no future in Top Cat? No. <laughs> uh. There's not really any... Well, I mean, yeah, there are feral cats in Australia. We could make it work. They're obviously the enemies. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah I, lots of kids playing it. That was good. Yeah, they, yeah. they, they seem to just keep churning through. Mm. I think it had some people get to like the twelfth level, like which mm. surprised me. I was like, I think that the, the, what would have been terrible if we put it there, and everyone played it, played a single level, and then, and then walked, walked away. away. And for the most part, everyone would play through at least two or three. I think the only person I saw that was leaving after one didn't realize there was more than one level. Mm. And then you pointed it out, and they went, "Oh, play another yeah. one." So yeah, that, that um, was that was validating. Did too. you see anything uh, there that you had? Did you have time to look at anything else? To Only see anything a couple. Mm. Um, the person standing next to me had a cat puzzle game, uh-huh. which basically you played Schrodinger's cat, uh, and it was like a co-op puzzle game where one of you played the dead cat, one of you played the living cat. No, you you play <laughs> uncertain cat. You both play uncertain cat, uh-huh. and then when you're observed, you swap between being and not being. So you kind of when you're not when you don't exist, you can kind of run through walls and be insubstantial. But as soon as you're observed, then you become solid. So you need to be observed to like pick things up. And sounds like it's based on a misunderstanding of that classic. Uh... <laughs> you mean the way everyone sees Sean's yeah. cat? <laughs> uh, so that that one. Of was... course not. That would be ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that one was called. I think the working title was just like Cat Puzzle Game or yeah. something like that. Uh, and what else? Uh, there was Game Lofts new mobile. It was thing. so funny. So I, I look over and I see a. A, uh, a very professional looking stand mm. like oh whatever the, who, who's that that's got money and Michael said oh that's Game Loft it's mm. their new game uh, but the thing is we said the words out loud so we summoned them <laughs> <laughs> and they came over and said oh do you want to play I'm looking at this big TV going like oh you know, the Game Loft did like like mm. uh, multiplayer like uh, console games but oh well ah no, it just looked good on a big screen. Then there's a, here's the phone. And go, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got to play their new Battle Royale mm. on the phone. Oh, no. Um, I tell you what, it was actually fine. <laughs> no, I, I actually didn't mind it. Yeah. Um, I liked that. So it was, yeah, it's a twin stick shooter, Battle Royale. Um, but you don't really mm. shoot. It auto fires. You, you have no control over the shooting. Yeah. It's about dodging. But the, the weapons you pick up have firing patterns similar to bullet hells. Right, yeah. Yeah. and they they render the bullets like bullet mm. hell, so the high contrast outline and the yeah. wide and center. Um, so it really just be it's mainly focused on movement, yeah. And it's, that's its yeah. primary. It's like a battle bullet hell, like a battle royale bullet hell. Yeah, like, so it's, it actually was a pretty interesting idea. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought it was like this is actually pretty playable. It mm. makes the controls less shit on a mm. mobile. I did have some problems using some abilities because I had a bit of problem because it has verticality, like it had like jumping up in the yeah, air. Yeah, and I thought Ooh. that felt a bit. I didn't. I don't know. Like that. That I struggled with because the bullets could go up mm. as well. So, but I did think yeah. an interesting take on basically yeah. making it a, a yeah. randomized bullet hell because the spawners are different mm. players. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was interesting. Mm. And then yeah, you pick up different weapons, different spray patterns. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, there was another one I played, which was um, Endless Runner X, uh-huh. uh, which is out on the store now. This is a free, uh, free to download to add thing. Like an iOS store or it's on iOS. Store? I don't know if it's on Android yeah. as well. Might be. Um, but that was that was kind of fun. Like it's one kind of like a meta, endless runner. The the game that I uh, enjoyed uh, sort of yeah, I basically enjoyed the most. Um, I can't remember what it's called. It was because t- we thought when I told you about it, is it not Tumble Town? Because we used to have oh, a yeah, yeah. Tumble Town. <laughs> but yeah, it was called it was called like yeah, Tumble something or Tinker Town or something. Mm. But basically, it was a, it was just a um, local multiplayer 
uh, game. It was only two player there, but it's supposed to be four player in the long run. And basically, uh, it would give you a goal on the level, and you had to build a structure to get up to it. And the build rules are like World of Goo. Oh, but nice. you, it's a platformer, right. so you have to jump where you want the platform to be, and then you place it. So a little bit like there, it's only a final year student project. It's not like a, it's not like they're making it for it's just like they're putting it out there so it was pretty cool for that i gave them a little bit of feedback on readability stuff and everything but just as an idea because the thing that was really good was that all the towers were still uh physics um operating so if you, someone's tower was getting too big you could throw a bomb at it but you could also just go stand on one side of it and just tilt the whole <laughs> yeah. thing over and it'll collapse like i can see some pretty mm. especially with towers falling into each other and trying to build up because you can only build on what your tower not the other person's I thought especially four player, like someone trying to sabotage the other tower, someone trying to build, mm. like get some of that. Yeah. Could build offensively to like tip into their tower and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. I mean, it seemed like it was more proof of concept at the moment, but I really, really liked that concept. Mm. I hadn't said, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I love my multi local multiplayer games, mm. but uh, I can only have so many arena yeah. fighters. <laughs> I think there are a lot of them. There's so many. <laughs> Something that surprised me a little bit about the day was that there was so little mobile there. Mm-hmm. Like I just I thought that, yeah, I just thought there'd be more. Like I think it was three mobile games and probably like around maybe ten mm-hmm. that weren't. Um, especially like lots of these kind of couch co-op games. Yeah. And at the moment, they're rough. Like to to have any kind of success with those things is real tricky. Uh, so that was a bit, a bit kind of. Do you think it's for an amateur? Do you think it's trickier? Like get like I I, oh, I no, would imagine I, getting a small audience yeah on that might be doable while mobile you might be getting no audience. I saw some numbers uh-huh. of like of Steam numbers of like where genres sit yeah, yeah, yeah and basically as soon as you go couch co op the number is zero or effectively zero uh-huh. um, just Paul's name next yeah <laughs> yeah it, like for, I put so I, many I, couch co op games yeah, I have because you not have even all played. Of them. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah, obviously like, literally but yeah it's like it's Paul basically yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like, I think our local multiplayer on Reddit, I think there's about a hundred of us subscribed to that yeah. subreddit. Uh, and I think for like, for a student project or like a just out of year, they're mm. great because, you know, you get, it's it's basically free gameplay because mm. like you've got people in there and as soon as you add people, you have people adding mechanics just through the nature yeah. of them being mm. people. Um, but you don't have any of the complexity of getting it running online. Yeah. So for Plus for, you're literally making something you can play with your friends. Yeah, Which yeah. when you're early 20s and uni... You can do a lot of. <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. And so I think in that context, it's it's great. Uh-huh. Um, but as soon as... Like, I think right now, if, as soon as you... Like this is something you want to commercialize, it's going to be tough. Like, yeah. So, that, I, yeah, I don't know. Seems like one I, of those... I hope, I hope I'm wrong. Like I, I really hope because there was some cool looking stuff mm. there. Um, Look... Lost still can't. Uh, there's just a thought there that I sort of want to continue, and it ties into both the big games I was playing today. Mm. So Dicey Dungeons and both the Lees are, are both um, both games by very well known indie developers. So Dicey Dungeons is probably is one that's most. So he's like getting things up and getting things seen. So Dicey Dungeons is Terry Cavanaugh's new game. Who's Terry Cavanaugh? Yeah, yeah. Now I've seen so many games that look exactly like. Now, <laughs> is a fantastic fucking game. Yeah. I loved it. When it came out, what, eight years ago? Mm, something, something like, like that? that. Yep. And <laughs> I don't know how good any of these other games are. They may be as good or better. Doesn't matter, though. You've Doesn't had, matter. You've had your good one. Because Terry came and made that one, yeah. that two-color, really cool little mm. retro platformer, and now it's done. And now his new game, Dicey Dungeons, is the slickest motherfucking game <laughs> I've ever played in ages. What, what's it on? Uh, Dicey Dungeons on Steam at the moment. Mm. I, do, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you pushed to other platforms, but so Dicey Dungeons is deck building roguelike game. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really, I'm the one. I'm the first la- last person on this table who really should be yelling. <laughs> huh? But anyway, um, so uh, he's been working a little while, uh, and uh, so the big thing you see the character you're playing is a literal dice. Okay. Uh, or die. I don't know how we go on with that. It's just dice for one, isn't it? A die is one. Dice yeah, is die. more than one. Okay, so, so you're one die. Uh, I think in the story you're actually a person that's been turned into a mm. die. Um, and uh, just very fun. Like the animation, the styling is very cute. It's all great. Yeah, it, it's nice. It's, it's, it's a, probably a slightly nicer than Slay of the Spire, I think, but probably mm. a little bit more cutesy than Slay of the Spire is. So personal taste on that. The big difference with it is... is yeah, see how I can describe this. See if I can get it down to you. So, uh, depending what character you're playing and what level you are, 
when you start your turn, it rolls a bunch of dice. Three dice or whatever. Uh, you also have a bunch of cards. Uh, and those cards, they're not like randomly drawn. They're just like what your current mm. backpack is. So you might have one that is, if you... So uh, the, uh, sort of early on, you'd have like one that's just, this is sword damage. Put a dice on this card and you do that much damage. Uh, here's a sword that does double damage, but the biggest number you're allowed to put on it is a four. Um, so sort of rules that stack up like that. And the first character you get um, has uh, an, an, an ability built in, which is you get to reroll dice three times. Mm-hmm. So just an, a, a one die three times, whatever die you want. Um, so you start getting things like one of them. One of the cards is use once per turn. You can up the die number by one. So you might have a card that requires like an even or an odd number uh, or okay, a certain yeah, thing yeah. there. Or if it's a six, I thought, oh, am I going to get a seven? Mm. No, gives you an extra die, which is a one. But you might have a card that is just like put any fucking die on here and it does damage. So you just want to get as many mm. extra die as you mm. possibly can in the game. And it's one of those things where it's like the, the deck building is building your backpack, which is a bunch of abilities and you can upgrade those. And it's, it's uh, actually kind of like an inventory puzzle. Yep. It's like, okay, all the abilities have a certain size. You can arrange them around, see how they fit in there. Uh, then every character has their own. So... I, I played through one whole game, which I beat the first time, but it's sort of designed to do that. It's literally the easiest character. Mm. Uh, the, yeah, the being able to re-roll a die three times is a pretty powerful mm-hmm. ability. Um, and then they give you a new character. The next character is the thief. And the thief does... Um, it has some cool... Uh, but its other inherent ability is that um, you take one card from the opponent every turn if you don't know what it is. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. it's... Um, but the fact that you just sort of build that static thing and then it's playing around with numbers, it's sort, it's not really maths, but it is a little bit like working out the order of operations with this to be most efficient. You know, and then there's status effects, all the basic mm. stuff that you'd imagine in any sort of card game. But it was different enough that I'm like, I don't actually have an analogy for another card game like it. It certainly plays like it. And if you've played any sort of battle card game, you get it instantly. Mm. But it's actually pretty different to all of them. And it's, it's very cute and... And fun so far. And the, at the moment, I'm still early enough that everything's learning new. Mm. It's so like, oh, how do I deal with so this? What, what kind of aesthetic is it? Um, I mean, it's just 2D art. Uh, it's sort of... Pixely? No, not pixely at mm. all. Um, it, it's sort of like simplistic illustration. So okay. a bit more than like a cutout, mm. but not like highly detailed. Mm. Are we talking like scribble notes area? Higher than that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it might just... Here, you tell me. <laughs> that works. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just came out today. Uh, it's actually... Um, That's pretty It's selling really fucking well, yeah. apparently. And so, so. Is, is it something that should be on Switch? Uh, it could be. Uh, I mean, it could go on anything. It could be on mobile. It could be on anything. I mean, hell, actually, most of the time when you're looking at it, you're mostly looking at cards and dice now that I look at the final. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, you know what? It reminds me a little bit of Wanderlust now that I'm looking oh, at it. Oh, yeah. So maybe it is a little bit cut outy. Go oh, go bigger so it's watchable. No, I hate Google Images Google these images days. Hate it's the you. worst. So yeah. oh fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> so that's like the character sort oh, of design. Oh okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's very readable. Mm. Um, I think I've only had one thing where I'm like, I wish when I moused over that, it told me what mm. that was. Everything else was tooltips and everything. Yeah. What you want. Um, yeah, very very slick, very very cool. Mm. Dicey Dungeons. I think it was twenty dollars Australian. Okay, it's pretty good. Um, that's, a, that's quite a genre switch like going mm. from 5v 6v how well, many v's there's a lot of v's some, yeah. some number of v's Terry's done some other things between but I think a lot of them are free it's, it's, just, it's cool that he sounds kind of like a, a deck building Yahtzee game yeah <laughs> it's, it's cool <laughs> kind of yeah know, he's, he's kind of jumping to like, like yeah, different different genre yeah it is an well, interesting he, take he, on it yeah too. he did Super Hexagon so it's actually been oh, a while yeah. since he's done anything hmm he must have just been fucking around doing yeah. stuff with well, people. I, think, uh, I, know, I know he I has know done a lot of like, collaborative yeah. stuff yeah. with I'm guessing the he, v, 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 v things in other games. I'm guessing he made off quite well after V, financially. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, he is here fucking credited on fucking pages of stuff. Mm. Yeah. He's just one of those guys that's around. Mm. He's, a, he's, a, he's a bloody <laughs> random. Just helps mm. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so Dicey Dungeons, really cool. Mm. Um, so... What what's else happening, boys? Um, been learning some Spanish. What's been happening? It's been going all right. I, I finished Dragon Quest Builders too. Oh yes! How yeah. how how? I, well, I, 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 hear. I hold on. 
I finished the story of Dragon yeah. Quest Builders 2. <laughs> I haven't finished the game of Dragon Quest Builders 2. There is a lot of like little things that it wants me to do. Um, what does it want you to do? There's nice. lots the, of like little, no little mini achievements so, on the core island of like, do just, this and get, get a medal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you what's, mind building things? <laughs> it's just, that's all it is. What's the, what, but is there any like clever building things or just finding things and doing them? Um, there's a lot of hidden, like where you don't know what it is till you've done it. And there's a lot of rooms. Like when you build a room, it can be a lot of different types of rooms depending on what you put in it. And the game doesn't tell you what they are. So you've got to like play around and figure out mm. like, oh, if I want to build a, a specific type of bedroom for someone, then you got to figure out what items to put in it to get that specific bedroom. So and there's a list and it tells you how many you've got and stuff like that. So you got to kind of figure Lacks out. information. Yeah. That's Pretty much. Right. There's like a little yeah. Wikipedia with 10 lots, out of, 10 lots of question marks. Nice. <laughs> but the, the core story loop uh, was very good. Yeah, yeah. It went in a very interesting direction. It was good. 40 hours in. 40 uh, approximately that's maybe that's 45 significant. um the last two hours were probably the most fun i had playing the whole thing yeah yeah they, I, I, they, I saw you mentioned i don't want i don't I finally want got all this stuff and why didn't i have this 40 hours ago yeah. <laughs> but yeah they they the very last section you get a bunch of stuff that they really should have had for the whole yeah, game I mean, <laughs> <laughs> on one hand it's like but please evolve like that you don't have to be so conservative mm. with everything you're doing also Dragon Quest game. Yeah. So, literally, Dragon's Quest is the opposite of trying to do anything up to date and modern. They want to keep everything <laughs> yeah. as fucking traditional yeah. as possible. It's, uh, yeah. It's, uh... Oh, actually, speaking of Dragon Quest games, I got very excited because mm. uh, Rocket Slime 3 oh, has that, had a fan, fan. No, it all happened years ago. Oh, okay. It's a 3DS game. But the fan translation just completed. Oh, yeah. Um, but apparently. That you, to run it, you really need to have a cart and uh, a hacked 3DS. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I've got to do work. Yeah. <laughs> I, a while ago, because I've got like an old 3DS, uh-huh. I was like, you know what? I'm going to try. I'm going to see what I can do so I can kind of get one of these cart hmm. things working. Maybe I can put like a SNES emulator on something. On something. I don't know. Uh, it was really hard and I couldn't mm. get it working. I, I tried. I think the 3DS remains one of the more involved yeah. things to to crack for her I mean I haven't tried it but people I know that did it last week said it was the easiest hack they've ever done so maybe it's improved I I don't know like I did a Vita hack that involved opening a web page (laughs) oh I mean the Wii is basically at that level now yeah I don't know how to we uh, how to like I'd have to like reformat my Wii to be factory defaults to work out how easy it is to do <laughs> yeah. again. Because last time I turned it on, I'm like, I don't. What were all these channels like? The homebrew and is that the Doom channel and yeah. what? It's like, and these days I have to actually if I need to like clear space, my Wii shop purchases I have to copy off with the homebrew <laughs> stuff <laughs> because otherwise I can't get them again. How can I play Defend Your Castle? Remember that. Remember that game? The stick figures attacking oh, the castle? Yeah, yeah. I used to buy like... What a, what a one, solid game. I, w- I bought one eShop game a week um, until they released some shitty farm fucking game and it was so broken and, uh, and should not have been released. I emailed Nintendo and said, this game is broken. I want my money back. I said, no <laughs> refunds. I said, well, I'm never buying a fucking game. I'm just sorry. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Where's the seal of quality, bitch? <laughs> Um, I'd probably still put some games, <laughs> but not no longer my my game of the week mm. stuff. And so yeah, I'm looking I'm looking through the Switch store at the moment, just like oh, I feel like spending some money. There's so there's much some, on there. There's so much on there, on there, but there's so, so little that's jumping there's out. A lot now, of choices. Right? Yeah, I'm. Just, it's too many choices. You mean you're not buying Turok too? Fuck no. <laughs> Turok, look, even even when it first came out, I knew Turok was trash. Like we love the cerebral ball. Don't we had that laughs mm. playing it, but I knew in my heart of hearts that this game is rancid. <laughs> but uh, some people seem to enjoy it still, so I don't know. Maybe it's actually better than I remember. Maybe, Maybe I have such a like hatred in my heart. For, Maybe you but, should like, buy it and find out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is there... Because I, mean, I think the fog wasn't as close in two. I don't remember any of it. So. Oh, so Turok was like, <laughs> if we were sitting in this room in Turok, it. you wouldn't see that wall because there would be fog there. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really miss this kind of skip the whole N64 thing. It was kind of a bit of a blind because you were playing me. Privateer at the time. Privateer. Just, like, you can't have forgotten what Privateer is. Wing Commander, Privateer. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think, was I playing that? No, you weren't, but you play Elite now, so I just put my oh, head there. Oh, okay, all right, all right. It's like, what? <laughs> you were playing C&C. <laughs> yeah, were, that, that would yeah. be what I was you playing. You were playing C&C. Virtual yeah. Valerie 2. Ah, that's where it was. <laughs> 
Goodness, goodness <laughs> gracious me. Um, so yeah, Dragon Quest Builders two, good times. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting for it to go on I'll, sale. I'll probably go back and to then it and keep I'll building buy stuff. It. Yeah. I've almost bought it a few times. Whenever I get sleepy, mm. my threshold for not <laughs> buying things drops. And so what if you had a few drinks? Oh, then it's even worse. If I'm sleepy and drunk, just <laughs> let's have a let's have a drink by the shop party. <laughs> what are we the last get? seven re- <laughs> release games on Switch? Go. <laughs> oh god, I wish I, I wish I had my the top three Switch rows of games. games. Just the amount of this like shitty like one dollar game. You're like, I'm just gonna have a look at it. It's, it's only a dollar. <laughs> yeah, there's been a few of those I've got now. <laughs> But if you buy, some, some if you buy fun, 50 of them, them, it's no longer it a dollar, is it, at the top Paul? of the store, yeah. though. you got, like, like The Way. That one's always there. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've played The Way to Completion. Mm. I've got it. I downloaded it. Yeah, I've played about 10 minutes of it. It's quite rough. Yeah. It's, it's more the... Um, it's just the control in it that's just a bit janky. Okay. It really, if they could just improve it in the game... Mm. Like, it's one of those games where you won't climb up a ladder unless you're on the pixel in front of it. Mm. And it's like, you could actually... You could fix these things mm. up. Because this yeah, is like a remastered yeah. version. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but they, I think they just, they just upped the resolution, but they just went into Photoshop and went two times resolution yeah. <laughs> by cubic filtering. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so, I'm, uh, you want to talk about Iron Fury, James? Yeah, so Iron Fury, previously Iron, Iron Maiden. Maiden is the first person shooter which has been made in the build engine the the duke 3d engine not you know they're not trying to mimic it they just went and you know what we're gonna do is gonna use that old engine for for reasons i don't know what the reasons were but they did it uh so i've been playing a bit of that the last last few days and it's been interesting comparing it to the because we played the the, the demo, demo last year yeah uh and i kind of actually think so far i've probably enjoyed enjoyed the demo level more mm. than I've I've kind of enjoyed the but also the it, I I mean I, I I have but I haven't loaded it up yet I mean it was very fresh when we played the demo yeah and I think part of that is yeah. like oh you know this was like jumping back into like you know playing a very authentic Duke style shooter but but like taking it to levels that Duke couldn't do We're like, oh this is just like Duke except oh! You couldn't have that going over yeah. that. The build engine doesn't support yeah. that. What is this madness? Yeah. What have you done? Yeah. It's like, yeah. And, uh, I, and so when first I was playing it, so we got like a pre-release version of it that was playing uh-huh. it. And it was, um, it's actually received some patches over the time since I played it. Because when I first jumped into it, the game was hard. Mm. Like I was dying a lot. Um, I was having some problems with things like you run into a room and I'd just take damage like, and I wouldn't know where anyone was uh-huh. so I'd be like oh I've been shot and you take a decent chunk of damage uh, and so I'll constantly basically be losing health it was very hard to not lose health because the moment I walked into a room I'd get like, shot lots of enemies with like hit scan like, weapons it's like well it's not like, much I can really do I can't even see them yet and uh, like, I can't yeah, dodge anything yeah. because there's yeah. and I feel like I think I think there might have been the patch like basically turn on the accuracy a bit or maybe they did the Bioshock thing where the first shot kind of always misses I don't, I'm not sure but I've, I've found i've been having having that problem as much uh they also added in when you kill something and you're in low health it has a high drop rate of more health yeah um so they've been doing little kind of little tweaks uh and they've really got the experience now down to something which feels pretty good um so they've a bunch of different weapons in this game so there's like the basic pistol uh which is has an auto lock on as as a very slight thing here how often now when we talk about a new first person shooter come out, do we talk about, oh, the guns that are in it? It's like, that, <laughs> used, to, that used to be the thing. Yeah, like the a thing, magazine yeah. was like, yeah. oh, there's three new guns in the new... Because yeah. like, nowadays it's just guns. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, yeah. well, we've got... The pistol four, gun? We've got 14 different assault, yeah, assault rifles. rifles. Well, yeah. no, you're absolutely right. Like, if we were talking about, like, like on Battlefront, oh, sorry, like Battlefield or, or COD or something, it'd be like, yeah, or even Destiny, it'd be like, yeah, this this assault rifle versus slightly different assault rifle. Uh, with this one, like each of the weapons has a particular usage and purpose. Usage and purpose, like, yeah. yeah. Like Doom is the penultimate example. Yeah. Of like, yes, they're for they're tools for different yes. holes, and, and those holes are the ones you're putting yeah. inside demons. <laughs> sorry, what was that, Sam? <laughs> yeah. And under a tournament. Oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely under a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so yeah, so there's like fire rifle for me, please. Yes. They're actually flat cannon. No, flat, flat cannon, cannon, flat cannon, flat cannon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so one of the because one of the changes I made is with the pistol. If you right click or hold down mm. right, it turns into an auto lock on, and but it uses more ammo. But it's really good for when you want to take down these little flying fuckers. Oh yeah, yeah. and like you know you can shoot and like yeah. But are there any rats? Uh, no, there are little uh, heads, little like spidery heads, like uh, the thing style things, which kind of oh. run around. 
uh, then there's like you know your, your kind of grenade launcher, your shotgun, um, your, your Uzi's like very kind of like shadow um, shadow warriors style kind uh, of like um, two dual, Uzi's. dual Uzis, uh, which also sets them on fire. So it's like a kind of, flame, of like damage weapon. Uh, but all the weapons feel pretty good. The, my go to weapon is the shotgun um, because it's a shotgun in a video yeah. game. It is a shotgun <laughs> in a video game. Um, but I I don't remember if Duke 3D had location damage. I can't remember if it did. Um, I remember thinking thinking it did because but, sometimes you could shoot them in the throat, but I think that was just random. It might have. This definitely does have location damage because um, they, they've got this nice balance of like you, you don't have a shitload of ammo, so you have to make your, your shots count. Uh-huh. Um, and I did a bit of getting good with the shotgun to the point where I, I very rarely waste a round uh-huh. and I'm generally getting a headshot. And I had this like this, this kind of like transition where I first started playing the game, and I was playing it very cautiously and slow because I felt like I had to. Because um, like if I got if I got shot, I took a lot of damage and I died a lot. And, mm. um, but then I, my 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 style of play slowly something changed as I went along, and I eventually landed on this point where I did run around very very quickly. So I had like it felt really good, like fast running around, moving moving fast, like taking lots of shots. Um, and I, th- I think they balance the the accuracy of the enemy so that if you do that, you're actually going to avoid a lot of fire. Mm-hmm. And so if you're constantly moving, you can like you're probably going to be okay for the most part. Um, and this, but you still need to take them down. So you have to move fast and get an accurate shot, and you'll you'll clear things out and you'll get through. And the the health is is given to you in like just enough, just like just enough of a rate to like. Yeah, I'm like very rarely am I on full health. I'm normally uh-huh. around the kind of sixty, kind of eighty percent mark. Mm-hmm. Sometimes down to twenty. Sometimes get up. But there's just this nice feeling of tension where I feel like I'm vulnerable because I can actually die pretty easily. But if I keep pushing myself forward and move quickly and take things down, I'm probably going to be all right. Uh, and there was a few moments when playing it where I, I think just the the gunplay just worked uh, and it felt really satisfying. Um, and I, I don't know if like how much of it was sort of coming back to, I, I can remember playing Duke like pre Wasad, yeah, and I I struggled with it, you know, oh, playing it with keys. like you know, like just using keys. So I don't know how much of this is like childhood wish fulfillment of being good. <laughs> <laughs> it feels a little bit like that. You just remember uh, getting me with a fucking shrink ray yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember when we all thought Mouse Look was dumb? I did. I remember when yeah. I, I used it in I think. Jedi Knight like, might have been the first nonsense? time I used it. I'm like, this is what is this? This is madness. <laughs> Can't be my numpad, with this. please. <laughs> I um, I took it into school because we were playing Quake in the labs uh, after yes. school, mm-hmm. and I loaded up a mouse driver because it was in, and I'm like, oh look at this, and everyone was like, that's fucking stupid, <laughs> and probably took three weeks, and then everyone is playing using mouse like? and keyboard because yeah. it, yeah, I mean, it is weird. Like all the control systems we use on PC are kind of arbitrary and strange, mm. but it's so good. Yeah, well, I guess the the mouse you've got this benefit of you're getting so much precision with minimal effort. Yeah. I, I I love the early ones where it's like um, like the default in MDK, you can use the mouse to look left and right. Mm. Yeah, can't look up yeah. and down. Yeah, play a few um, games like that. And if you try to map it as such, uh, so if you like when you're using the sniper rifle, so you can use the mouse mm. to look. But that means that when you're not in the sniper rifle, push forward to walk. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a nonsense machine. <laughs> oh god, I've done so many different key buttons <laughs> to try and make MDK like modern playable. Mm. It's like I need I need to get in, I need someone to get in the code for me. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is not gonna work. Yeah. I always any game that had mouse push forward to walk, very good. Or like or, or the mouse is strafe. Had that one yeah. a few mm. times, yeah. yeah. We were just, we were all mad no, people, for a while. People were figuring it out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, once it got standard, yeah. it's like you know when the wildness of first person shooter on console until Halo, mm. basically. I mean, yeah. Mm. And now everyone does it, even your mum. Well, especially your mum. <laughs> mum struggles very much with video games. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard to get her to play some things. Just, just take her back to the NES <laughs> and then work your way up. Yeah. That's a. I mean, that's like whenever someone tells me that this game's very easy, and it's like I look at the look at the controls, and you're like they're using every button on the fucking controller. Yeah. Do you know how many buttons yeah. are on the controllers these days? Especially with no. modifiers. Back the fuck off! <laughs> it's like, oh, just click in the stick. No, 
No, no, I'm not telling a ch- young child or an older person to push the yeah. stick in. I don't want to teach people what L3 is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when yeah, they can yeah. barely figure out what L2 is. Hell, because we switch around stuff so much, I've still got to check fucking w- w- which is A and B on this yeah. one. It's the X. It's yeah. the X one. Where there's an X on every controller, but it's in a different spot. Yeah, yes, yeah, so there's mm. three different Xs. <laughs> and then, yeah, we got... Oh, if only we still had the click from the GameCube controller. Oh, so good, that click at the end. That. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to take another game. Yeah. Oh, and that was we were talking uh, about Iron Fury. Iron, right? Iron Fury. Um, yes, I like it. Um, it's it feels like a good version of one of the games we used to play. That's pretty accessible. Uh, levels are a little bit samey, but generally okay. Generally fun times. Mm. So, I have been playing Zachtronic's new game. Mm. Zachtronic being the amazing developer of games that are just programming but in different forms <laughs> <laughs> um, and like they're gen- like they are some of the best puzzle games around like yeah. his design mm. he's an amazing designer it's I, crazy. I, I, pro- I play probably about half of his games because I'm yeah. kind of like I'm too exhausted I'm still exhausted from the one last year mm. to play the one this year <laughs> the um, last one I played was uh, Opus Magnum oh yeah 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 because yeah, yeah. that, that's on Xbox Game Pass yes yeah, 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 um, yeah. and I don't think I got past the third puzzle because I could see that someone else had optimized it better than me. <laughs> and so like, I, I saw like, all these puzzles of like, this is amazing. But until I'm the number one at this particular puzzle, I can't go further. I, I think it was Ethan when he was at Remedy. He was just saying that like, as the downtime of all the coders was, yeah, time to get back into whatever it was at the time. It might have still just been... Um uh, shit, what's the first one? Uh, Space Cam. Space Cam. Mm. Just like, just optimizing Space Cam. Yeah. That's all yeah. <laughs> We can get it down to two yeah. instructions. It was it's actually it was really interesting seeing how because how different people solve it because uh-huh. like one of, one of like the the, the tests best test you can give a programmer is called the Fizzbang test, mm-hmm. um, and the Fizzbang test is simply iterate over a hundred numbers. Uh, if it's odd, say fizz. No, if it's divisible by, I think five, say fizz. If it's divisible by two, say bang. If it's divisible by both, say Fizzbang. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like it should be like a block of code. But that particular test will tell you so much about that programmer. Uh-huh. There's websites dedicated to like different ways people have implemented Whizbang, and I've I've done this with like you know people that I've worked with, and you can say like they'll do it, and you'll look at it, and it's like a unique signature for Entirely every person. different thought structures. Yeah, like yeah. what's important, like in terms of how it's structured, what's important in terms of efficiency versus kind of readability. I it's very fascinating, and it was this is what I found with Opus Magnum. Is that like you look at different solutions and like everyone has a different way to do it because they have like different priorities on like how you solve it. Is it efficiency? Is it your number of parts? Is it like is it maintenance? Like it's yes. Like, is it speed and just throws yeah, everything yeah. away? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyway, Zach Tronic, new game out, and it is not a puzzle game. It's a visual novel, isn't it? It is a visual novel. Okay. He has completely jumped to a different genre, and much like um Dicey Dungeons, it's also polished as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't mind a visual novel. Don't love it. Uh, but Zachtronics is a PC man. And yeah, at my heart, I've always be a PC man. So this is how good Zachtronics is at making visual novel. Most of the dialogue is voiced. You can click through it. It's still text up there. Mm-hmm. You can click through it. It's auto, auto, auto advance. You just turn that option on. Click out of the window. Doesn't stop the game. <laughs> Music's really good. Yeah. Start a scene. Oh, they're going to be talking for a while. I was editing photos for a few hours nah. and just playing on the other screen at the same time. No cut <laughs> yeah. audio went around. Just like, oh, I like, oh, they stopped talking. It's like, we better go make a decision. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I was like, you fucking know PC. Yeah, he, you know what I want a visual he novel. He understands that people want to multitask. <laughs> exactly. That everyone has more than one monitor. <laughs> yeah. And the weird thing is, at a certain point, it's almost a thematic oh, point of okay. the game. Yeah. It is. It, and like... It's not big, but there's been a few little comments in there like, I think he's talking about what I'm doing right now. I'll pay attention again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the basic concept, and I'm going to keep it very, very broad, because whilst at the moment I haven't got wild twists, uh, it becomes slightly more complex very quickly. Mm-hmm. And I think that's more fun to discover. Uh, the writing's very good. Uh, you are a woman that has just started work um, for, I can't remember the company's name, but basically they do um, AI-assisted counseling. Mm-hmm. Uh, and basically your job is to go in and talk to patients. Uh, and I, I think you're actually in a different room that, that, they, that you're just using your voice, but you don't actually do anything. They just talk to the, they talk to you and the AI program says, well, respond with this, respond with this. Mm. And so far in the game, 
the only options I've had is to respond with what the AI program okay. says. Um, I am very, very sure that will change because yeah. there's like if you read through the rules, it's about people going off script and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and blah blah blah. And your and there's some of some of you, your knowledge of this system, and everything that comes more into play later. But it's like it's a really interesting world where it's very now. It's based in San Francisco. You know, tech startups doing all this stuff. Um, and there's a lot of involvement with the tech startup community mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, and yeah, th- this whole idea of like tech moving into mental health. Mm. I'm like, okay, mm. okay, how can how can we optimize it? Like, all the people writing it? It's like people writing it, they don't actually know anything about psychology or anything. They're just caring about the program and how it works, the numbers that come up. It's like, uh, and then like things that confuse the system and how it responds and stuff like that. So it's Z- Zachtronics... I, mean, he's, I suppose his name is Zach. I don't actually know his name. It must be I Zach. think it's Zach something. Yeah. It's like, he's still coming from a programmer's point of view mm. of this issue, but it's very human and it's very much about okay. the people involved. Uh, you know, people that burn out and change careers mm. and like prioritizing money over lifestyle and stuff like that. Lots and lots of hot button issues. But at the moment, not patronizing. Very pretty naturalistic writing. Mm. As I say, all the spoken dialogue is voiced. There's still like an internal monologue that you yeah. look at. But what I found is that there's no sound. I just look over. Ah, great. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think I've missed a thing. It's yeah, been sorry. great. Um, artwork's very nice. It's just, um, I don't even know how. To... Yeah, it's 2D not, it's not, art. It's, yeah, it's 2D yes. art. Not, yeah. It's not pixel based. I saw some of it. It looked nice. It looks yeah. like a visual. I, I know. I know what you mean. Like, yeah, yeah it's it's got um, it's got it's a good some drawing. Pretty good music. Mm. Every, and every once in a while, like a music cue will come and go, like, oh shit, something's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like at the moment, very, very minimal input on my part. But the bit that I have had input on feels quite meaningful. Mm. Whilst they're not like, they're not presented as big ish, big things when you do it, but it seems like it's responding quite mm. well to what I'm saying. And as I say, I think there'll be. Look, here, here's the weirdest thing. And I love it. And I don't know if it'll ever be a mechanic, but it, when you finish a counseling session, they give you a ranking and you get a score. <laughs> <laughs> And they, they rank you for following AI directions? No, well, the rank comes from the person you counseled. Ah, okay. So that's entirely so they're story based. AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some people, like, someone that's, like, sort of, like, a bit more of a Luddite or just doesn't get you fuck, like, they might just not even bother ranking you. Yeah. Like, and other is, so that's there, but you also get, like, you get awards and you get level. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and it's obviously, you know, incentive system for the, the, the employees to keep mm. working hard. We, we do a hundred counseling sessions a day in this office, mm. all this sort of stuff. Um, but I do wonder if at some point I will get an actual score that I've earned. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then will I chase the number or will yeah, I... you optimize it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm quite excited to see where it goes. At the moment, very much enjoying the story. Very well presented. And as I say, for PC based, mm-hmm. if you do dual monitor and you're just like wanting something to do while you work, it's kind of my dream with visual novels. I've never found one that quite works. It's always been like, okay, that's great. And it's all auto advanced, but I have to... If I need to read something on the other monitor or whatever, I have to get that in there and then switch back to the mm. program so it continues. But no, it just keeps it live and keeps mm. running. I'm like, you know. Yeah. You fucking <laughs> use it. <laughs> this is my dream. What was, what was that one called? Uh, that's called Eliza. E-L-I-Z-A. It's okay. named after the AI. Mm. That, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because it's a topic I'm interested in. Like when, it, when you have like machine learning and mental health and like where is that going to be in you know, 20 years or, mm. you know. So, Yeah. It gets it, check that out. It's like hot button, and then it, it does push it just that little bit further as mm. well into like a little bit of the fantastic, but still possible stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's almost. I suppose it's almost like a Black Mirror thing mm. to a degree. Mm. Yeah. It hasn't quite hit it with that cynicism yet. That's I wouldn't good, be shocked if it does because uh, I, I don't <laughs> like the cynic. That's what keeps me away from Black Mirror. <laughs> it's too cynical. Ah, there's some non cynical stuff. I, I want my my outer limits. <laughs> and my tales from the crypt they're my anthology well, shows yeah i mean the new the new um uh, twilight zone was okay i didn't hate it as much as other people i thought mm. it was okay there was a uh, weird city that yeah, was that, an anthology the one. one yeah that one was okay again bit weird because it's all in the same universe that one mm. so it can cut over each other there was at least one or two other little sci-fi anthology what if things oh well okay what shall we talk about? Shall we talk about all this news? Some news. Yeah, all this very happy, exciting, happy important news. news. Okay. So let's not talk the sad little. news. Oh, okay. Well, news is over. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's start at the least uh, least sad. 
Uh, I mean, it's sad, but it's not. Oh no, this isn't sad at all. I just don't care. I mean, I do <laughs> care, but uh, EVO started happened. No, it's like, is it my? No, it's it's EVO. What is it? The fighting game. The tournament. Yeah, Evo. It's Evo. Evo, yeah. Evo. Oh, that was the problem in my head. You you don't say the things. I'm like, I said it. I'm like, I don't know what EVO is. What the yeah. fuck am I reading yeah, here? It's like, yeah. It's, yeah, it's Evo. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the fighting game tournament happened. Uh, Smash was the big one this mm. year. Um, and what was what was second up behind it? It was. Yeah, I can't remember. I know Mortal Kombat did some pretty decent sort of figures around. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't really watch them because no. I've never been into competitive esports. It's not my sort of thing. There was a, uh, <laughs> a bit of a fuck up near the uh, during during what it wasn't the Smash. No, it was in the uh, Tekken finals. In the Tekken finals, uh, sort of uh, like a round finished and it cut away, and then there was suddenly like Dling! and David Hayter's voice came up and said. That's some damn fine Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone went, oh my God, Snake's going to be a Tekken. He is not. <laughs> yeah, the ben and Nanko were not announcing that. Uh, it was not ever part of the game. David Hayter did not give authorization for that to be clipped done it was just like a custom voice he did for someone once and they took it and made a little joke and some people were very angry. Mm, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, I guess that it's not a great joke but also, <laughs> okay. Um, this, is, this is a very... Well, that's why, uh, if you have the board, uh, this is the I guess, because all these things were yeah, like, There's okay. a lot of guesses on there. Yeah, uh, but also uh, Riot have announced their worst kept secret that they're working on a fighting game. Oh, are they? Yeah. Amazing. Does this mean auto chess is over? Are we done? Is that... It could just be fighting auto chess. But auto chess is where everything was at like yeah. a month ago. Uh, yeah. I, uh, it's been a month, James. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have we moved on? It's, that's how long it lasts. No, no. I don't think so. I've almost got to the tutorial. <laughs> I've started understanding what the game yeah. is. I still don't understand what's fun We've about it. We've moved on once Paul yeah, actually yeah. beats the tutorial. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the, the death that's blow. The, <laughs> the moment Paul comes on this no, show and the, says, oh, I like this auto yeah, yeah. So once it, <laughs> like, it just drops off oh, Twitch. Oh, I've been playing the kids game with four chests. And, oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> I've got three mage knights. And I've been ganking. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, yeah, I don't know anything about it because it's yeah, but yeah, it's having. Hopefully, it, yeah, I don't know if it'll be just hmm. lol or whether it'll have. Um, I assume it'd be the same. The like, I imagine they universe. would. Yeah, it seems like the right. They're thing not exactly a, a company that takes a lot of risks. No. So, oh, and um, the people like those characters. Why would you make a bunch of new characters? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. This is, I suppose, good. Um, but pretty much, uh, so Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft all came out and said mm. that if you're going to have loot boxes on their um, platforms, you have to advertise the um, drop the, rates. The drop rates. Good. Yeah. Um, mobile's Some. been pretty good with that for a while. It's nice mm. to see. Uh, I actually thought they already had to because I thought there was like COPA restrictions on that kind of stuff. But mm. there is in China. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it's more mobile because like you have to hit. I think Europe anywhere in I think in the Europe like. In the EU, yeah, like there's really heavy regulations, because regular, so it's, it it's you know the gambling. Yeah, and it just that. sort of bleeds out to the other regions because of it. Um, mm. But yeah, it's really good that they're doing it that. Should be a thing, like yeah, or just never have them ever. Ah, oh, you can have yeah, them. True. You can nah, have your surprise nah, mechanics. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> nah, nah, burn it all. I love yeah. me some surprise I don't, mechanics. I don't like them. Like no, actually, I was having because Cheryl's been playing this game called Food Fantasy, uh-huh. and she's been loving the shit out of it. Like she's been playing this on mobile. Um, and let's, let's, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, I, and it's a gacha game. Oh, and yeah, but <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm a little done. bit like that as well. Like, cause I don't really like gacha games. Uh, and I was talking to her about it, and uh, the possibility of, well, what if you know, what if this was like a premium title or something like that? Not interested. She gen- genuinely likes the gacha mechanic, mm. and if you were to take that away, she wouldn't like it as much. So I can I, see why it's a thing. Well, it's it's just like the, the people like the gacha machines. Yeah. Like it's a thing. People enjoy it. Yeah, but that's because uh, I want to duck using the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but I think like you know like this is why I wouldn't say no loot boxes because I think it's just a thing which people look, use. Look, I think we that some people enjoy. Here's the rule: no loot boxes in games I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. There. <laughs> Name one. The games I want to play that don't have loot that boxes. That have do loot have. boxes that you would play if they didn't. Oh, they don't stop me from <laughs> playing games, but they don't. They just annoy me when they appear. But I also like, especially when games become more of an online service and stuff. And everything, what I kind of want is I want sort of the loot boxy stuff, but I want almost mechanics to stop people from being able to get everything. 
I want there to be shitloads of unique stuff and like no no literally you want, you you're want only allowed ten percent yeah. of the unique stuff <laughs> yeah. so that everyone is actually unique mm. instead of everyone just trying to get everything. Yeah. Um, I always sort of want that when like starting characters. I want like everyone. It's like no no, no when you roll. You well, can get it, anything. Wasn't it... Um, and, then, and then it becomes hard to get other wasn't stuff. Wasn't it Star Wars Online where originally being a Jedi was like an actual rare. really rare... Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You, you could sell them for a lot of money or something <laughs> yeah. like and that. And that's always the problem. Then yeah. commerce becomes involved. And mm. like, yeah. uh, anyway. There has been a lot of games with skins or at least... Mm. I mean, I know for, for one, Overwatch is one of them where mm. they've had like, here's a skin and it's limited and you can only get it by, you know, going to BlizzCon or doing a specific mm. thing in a different game with theirs and then a year later yeah. you can just get it normally I like um, events and everyone who got it limited always... is like uh-huh. <laughs> why, why are you letting everyone else have this <laughs> um, I like time limited events I think they're kind of fun yeah. when it's like hey it's Christmas you know here's yeah, a certain amount of time good... if you can get it in that period then hey you get it but something you know I think I've got some Hearthstone packs from like the first year oh they're yeah, wild packs. now anyway <laughs> so it doesn't matter so, I yeah. figured out because um, I'm playing WoW again I figured out I can use WoW to fund both my WoW subscription time and Overwatch loot boxes. Have you signed up to Classic yet? Well, you just get it if you got to. No, but you had to reserve names like two days ago. I didn't need to reserve my name. I put a unique game attack. Don't you still have to buy the base game? No. If you you have an active WoW subscription, you have access to Classic. Oh, I thought you had to actually buy it. No. Okay. It's just bundled in with Mm. your subscription. Yeah. Which Mm. is pretty. It's a good way to do it. Mm. Maybe I'll play it. But no, <laughs> because they have they, they've got that token system like Eve does, and yeah. a few other online games do mm. now, where you know in-game gold buy a token for day, game uh, time. How's that? But you can also it's, when you use the token, you get game time. Yeah, or you can get seventeen dollars on your battle mm. account. How's um old mate WoW going? I'm enjoying it. After um, um, because um, what was the the last expansion? Battle Forever, yeah. Because I I played through like the Horde story and then stopped caring. So the expansion, it was. I've enjoyed it more than most people apparently did. Like that core content when I've been replaying it, um, and it isn't great. (laughs) Sorry, Paul. I wasn't actually. (laughs) It isn't great. (laughs) Yeah. But um, the latest patch they brought out is actually two of the most fun areas I've ever I've experienced heard, in WoW. I've heard like, it's good. And I've played WoW since. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've jumped in every expansion and I played it solid from initial release through to Wrath. Mm. And then I jumped in, you know, one or two months every expansion from there. But yeah, this is, this is two of the best zones I've ever so played. So do you think that they are going to effectively get rid of the faction split? I don't believe so. But they're very quickly <laughs> approaching a world where it doesn't matter. That's what I'm. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm kind of expecting. Like the split's still going to exist, but it's not going to matter. That's, I think that's the trick. That's kind of yeah. Because yeah. you know you've got four or five new races now, um, the allied races, mm. and they are still Horde Alliance only. But I, like, like the Pandaren's still the only one that you can be yeah. either. But I figure at some point it's probably going to be you know you can yeah. be either on any of them. Yeah. Um, when you're doing PvP content, you can sign up to be PvP on the other side. Mm. You get like a little, like a buff for a while, and it's like, okay, now you're PvPing with the Alliance instead of the Horde, because there's you know servers that are way out of balance. Yeah. So it's I moving feel, towards a world I feel like where they'll solve a lot of problems. See, what, what what I why I think WoW Classic is happening because it's going to be a core audience that will always want that like Horde versus Alliance yeah. thing, and while that does not exist, they're kind of like stuck. With making too many too many changes, to yeah. WoW. So my my theory is that classic partially exists to keep people happy, while they can then come into WoW and make massive sweeping changes. Well, the thing is, too, I'm a massive lore nerd in general. Warcraft is one of the worlds that, lore wise, I have stuck on my head permanently. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are very rapidly approaching an area of law where if they want to, they can take the chance to completely reboot the game, scrap everything, start Mm. from scratch and go, everything you once knew with WoW is gone. We've completely remodeled everything. Here's all your races, no factions, new classes, whatever. We're at their approaching point where they can do that. Whether or not they will is really the question. Yeah. So, because I've I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV recently and it's been interesting comparing my experience with Final Fantasy XIV versus WoW. Because um, you talk about you like lore in yeah. WoW, right? I give it's... so few fucks <laughs> about the lore in WoW. I don't like the writing. I don't like the yeah. See, that's the thing. I don't like the character. The way it's presented like, is bad. Yeah, I, I there's like I know people get into it, 
but I just, <laughs> I just don't like it. I don't like the way it's delivered, and I have no, I just have no interest, none. But in Final Fantasy fourteen, I I read all the text. I treat it like a visual novel where I like basically put an auto advance and just go, "You come at me, story," because there's a mm. lot of it. Um, I give a shit about the characters. I give a shit about the world. There's nuance to the world that it delivers to me. Like it'll like there'll be things that'll give me about like refugee crises where it'll set up one expectation in one patch, which will then be subverted in the next one. Like it has like competent storytelling. Yeah. Well, I was just it definitely is just a bunch of stuff. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with that that train of thought. <laughs> just that I like Final Fantasy. You were segueing into the fact that you've been playing Final that, Fantasy that was, that was kind of it, but I didn't yeah, really want finishing. Actually, yeah, I actually was about done with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I guess like I would like it if WoW was could give me that experience because like, yeah. I can always say like, I know the world is interesting. I know it has good characters in it. See, the thing about the thing about it that I know for a fact is that. I could get everything I want out of that world and the lore without playing the game. Yeah. Very yeah. easily. And it wouldn't change anything. Mm. Like, I don't need to go and read all the quests. Like, I don't read the quests. Like, I get all that long storyline mm. out of just outside of the game. Yeah. But I play it because it doesn't cost me anything other than two days of game time to get the gold. Which is pretty good. Mm. So, EverQuest 2. Yeah. Um, Very keen. EverQuest. What was the one oh, that they, they binned next? EverQuest next? Yeah. Where it was going to be was like, like... building and minecraft yeah. and weird and... Wow. Good player. On, Remember, good all player content. You tried, you tried the beta with me, didn't you? Yeah, Foundations. EverQuest, yeah, yeah. whatever. It was... Uh, something like that. It was busted could, as hell. Couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the problem with when you try to get a community to build a game is... It doesn't work. But people it suck everywhere. at building anything. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Uh, except for Mario Maker. <laughs> oh, where was Where that, people uh, are very good at building very, really hard things. Yeah, or, or building yeah. Um, first person adventure games. Yeah, yeah, games. That, that little, uh, that yeah. little uh, <laughs> dungeon crawler. Dungeon yeah. crawler. It's yeah, crazy. Cool level. Okay, um, so, but speaking of building things, uh, yeah. the Minecraft Super Duper graphics pack, which was announced like four years ago now, something like that. Yes. Uh, it's they finally happening. Cancelled it. No. Oh, they, they cancelled it. it. Really? <laughs> it's done. Why, why did they cancel? Okay. I think the best part about that is Minecraft's had super duper awesome graphics packs for a very long time. But not on they console. They haven't been official and they haven't been on console. <laughs> um, so the big ones that we... Ch- I just don't have anything to say. So we had lots and lots of people angry about a few various issues with Epic. Yeah. None of them which fucking matter at all. Yeah. And if you care, get some fucking priorities. Yeah, you can tweet about me if you want. I don't use Twitter. <laughs> 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 Um, but what I like, so, so, so the big thing was the blow up on Ooblets going mm. exclusive, and then we were, but before people got mad, they just had because okay, I just said I don't use Twitter, I do sometimes <laughs> look at Twitter, so I just saw, saw an Ooblets tweet, and it was like, we did the thing that people do, get mad about, don't have a, don't get mad about it, and it was a gif of them dancing, and I just posted the Discord going like, haha, look at this funny thing they posted, isn't that cute? Moving on. Oh boy! <laughs> Can of worms opened. <laughs> I mean, not on our Discord, but no. fucking mm. Jesus Christ! Just in general, people care so much about nothing. It doesn't matter. <sighs> My only opinion on it is that I just find it utterly hilarious that of all the games to start, what is probably <laughs> the biggest conversation about the epic stuff, Ooblets was the one to really trigger it. And, and here's kind of thing. So okay, oh. so the thing, the only thing that kind of justifiable, but even still, fucking get over it is the tone of yeah, what they the wrote. Way yeah, they the way they did. Now, here's the thing. James already hated the game because of the tone. <laughs> <laughs> I was ahead of it. <laughs> and, and I liked the tone. And so I was like, oh no, I get the tone. So when I read it, I'm like, yeah. I get that tone. Yeah. But like, you were like, oh, this is just kind of this forced twee fucking yeah. bullshit <laughs> stuff. And that's exactly what it was yeah. like. They're trying to be funny, but they're not. It's like, well, that is, they're trying to be funny. <laughs> that's the tone of the game. <laughs> Ah, oh, so we're quite looking forward to Ooblets. Mm. Yeah, I also I still am. put forward the challenge to anyone too angry about it. Please tell me how Ooblets will suffer from being on this yeah. store. Well, now, now we'll have more money and can be a better game. Mm. But you won't be able to use the workshop, oh, which no. doesn't support and was never going to support. Yeah. I have to open another program. Oh no! Yeah, can't preload it. Uh, G- uh, Ganog or Ginog mm. is currently free on Epic Game Store, mm-hmm. and next week is Hyperlight Drifter mm. and Mutant Year Zero. Oh wow! Mm. Which okay. is like. Holy fuck! Like, that's does that include the new DLC? I doubt it, because they they uh, quite often when they do the two week one, the two a week ones, which is still like they do a game a week. Now it's some weeks there's two, but nearly always when there's two two in a week, one of them has quite a lot of DLC yeah. to buy. But the thing is, so what? 
<laughs> There's also think, a yeah, fucking free get, good game. We're free at game. a point where like anyone who's specifically boycotting the Epic Game Store is missing out on a lot of very good games for free. <laughs> I mean, the only problem I've had with it is that, okay, I already owned all these games. Yeah, yeah um, but... <laughs> it's every now and then. Yeah, it's not really a problem. I just like filling out the list. Um, it's like, it's yeah, like they, it looks like think... I've bought all these games and I haven't. Further undermining the value of video games. <laughs> Fantastic, because if they weren't low enough... Let's just give them away for free. It's, it, <laughs> and I don't disagree with you on mm. that, but yeah, it is. It's, See, Mutant Year Zero is on my Switch list to get. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's often what I find. It's like, I go like, ah, yes, free here on PC. And you're like, but it's not actually I want to yeah. play that. Yeah, game. I want to play it on Switch. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just want XCOM oh. 2 on Switch. I want them to bring it out. That'd be a good time. Yeah, yeah. Or um, what's the one that's on Epic Store? The Phantom, what is it? Oh, uh, Phoenix Point. Phoenix that's Point, the yeah. That's the By one. the original, uh, the original XCOM designer. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's going to be. Good that got delayed again anyway. Mm. Wonder what that does to the exclusi- exclusivity period. I'd imagine so. Those yeah. periods are uh, from release, right? Yeah. I mean that the only th- my only problem with all of the thing is kind of being sold by Gold Galaxy, which is just telling me yeah. where the fuck I have everything. Yeah, if it gets yeah. to become giant. So you know if you're in a game yeah. on a store or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, I already like when I need to buy a game, either for my personally or for some other reason, like doing a panel or something. I just go to is there any deal dot com, <laughs> type it in, <laughs> and get it from whichever fucking store is cheapest. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, unless that's. Oh, I mean, they don't do GTA or such shit like that anyway. Um, and then the other big one, which was actually pretty big news, but I don't know what we particularly can contribute to it, was uh, ESA. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, you know, they run E3. It's the biggest thing they do. Uh, they, you know, and they're a lobbying group for the electronic industry, uh, for the games industry. Sorry, uh, they on their website just published a list of everyone that registered at E3 this last year with a media badge, which is about two thousand people mm. of their emails, their phone numbers, and home addresses. Okay, don't do that in your um, website. And this is, you know, yeah, it's you just have, an Excel you have file, certainly. Isn't it? Re- uh, yeah, it's just an yeah. Excel file, yeah. It's the, the public Excel file. Yeah, yeah uh, like the, the, the allegedly the link was behind a paper, but the, it was just sitting on this file server. Yeah. Mm. So there was no protection on that. Um, and they said, oh, this is a mistake we've never done before. Ah, they've done it multiple times before. Mm. Um, so yes, then those people proceeded to get doxxed by everyone yeah. that just likes to say it was about games journalism. Mm. Um, and, and that's probably, pro- probably some Ooblets people as well. <laughs> um, yeah, not good, not good. Mm. And at, at the moment, it's... It's just another... The only thing really to say about it is ESA is in a very bad position these days. We're getting more and more people dropping out. We're getting e- less people going to E3. E3 is becoming more irrelevant. And now, media that isn't mandatory to go there, so if you're not on a big website or something like that where it's just expected for you to be there, and even then your pro- personal details probably won't be in there. They'll just be the company office and mm. stuff like that. You're going to risk ESA with your information in a toxic environment that we currently own? Like, why? You can just sit at home and watch everything online. Yeah, well, yeah. it's... Is E three just not really relevant anymore? Like, what's well, the? I'm not sure it is. Like, it Here's makes a, sense when you have to be in a like be in a room to watch something. E three was always my dream growing up. Going to E three was going to be like, yeah, I'm gonna go fuck one day. It's going to be great. And then it's like, okay, well, I can kinda if I wanted to spend the money, I could kinda go now with a few like, but I still couldn't get into a press conference, which are the big things. But then they all stream live anyway, mm. so that doesn't matter as much anymore. And there's almost nothing on the floor anymore because it's become a public show. So it's all just... I mean, about the only thing is the Nintendo booth and people say those lines last all day. It's mm-hmm. like, ah, eight hour late line to play Animal Crossing. See, I think, I think these days you'd enjoy GDC more. Yes, I would yeah. imagine so very much. I mean, I, most of what like what I do at PAX is walk around the mm. indie areas and talk to everybody. Mm. And it seems to be GDC has a lot of that with mm-hmm. just a little bit more focus on drinking. <laughs> um, yeah. only a little bit yeah only a little yeah. bit different yeah. yeah there's a little bit kickback on the drinking culture especially in Australian stuff I find yeah. but, but I still enjoy it yeah. <laughs> I think it's been a while now since I've been to GDC um, but it is a it's a very surreal experience and just the people you meet yeah like it's just you just end up hanging out. Like, I think when I was there, I ended up hanging out with the That Game Company guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just because they're just, it's just, they're, the just environment they're just people. You're in. Like, you know, like, they're just devs. Well, that's the thing. Uh, we, we have now met you know, the quite a few office. of people that would regard as heroes to us in our growing up. Mm. And Game Dev is the easiest people to fucking talk to because they're just fucking nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and half of them are awkward and they feel as uncomfortable as yeah. you do when you're first meeting them. Yeah. And then it's just like, yeah. Oh, by the way, do you just want to talk about bullshit? Oh, I love bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> 
One day we'll get you to GDC, man. Yeah, it'll be I fun. Think, I think you'll have yeah. a good time. I mean, I always just... Re- my always go back to is the egos in... Like, there's some egos in gaming, don't get us wrong. But it's like, back in the day, if you had a problem trying to just do some basic programming, you'd go, oh, fuck, I don't understand. I don't understand how to make an int. Dear John Carmack. Yeah, he'd, and he'd reply. <laughs> and he'd reply. Yeah, yeah. That's like, yeah. It's Give a, your tips. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful... Like, that. that's, that's I suppose... I, I withdraw from a lot of the... Um, of, of community online these days because there is just such a negativity to a lot of it but historically gaming such a positive mm. group and such so no, open and easy to get game developers tend to be positive mm. gaming isn't I think, it, I, I think it's switched it. I was I was in lots and lots of like fan communities for a long mm. time like I spent like I think it's about finding like those 15 years on 3D Realms for- forums before they closed mm. up or something and it was pretty positive on the whole although you avoided the Duke Duke Forever channel because that was just people coming in to complain <laughs> everyone else was fine I, I wonder I wonder how much of negativity in gaming culture these days is from the negativity of like of YouTube and how that's kind of... I think it all feeds into mm, it yeah. with Twitter like, it, as well. It all, it all the, kind of loops back. Yeah, mm. things that the algorithm pushes out because they get more attention. I mean, people hate watch stuff more than they like watch. Yeah. It's, and that, that's a, Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, oh, if, if we push this out to this customer, they fucking hate this stuff. So they'll watch it for six hours. It's like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, I don't get that. I might hate... Yeah, I might have hate watched like the first few seasons of Walking Dead. I might have hate watched Preacher. <laughs> uh, but you know that still doesn't take that much of my time and I stopped mm. I'm wondering what I can do to retrain the algorithm because right now I get I get a lot of stuff I don't want to watch because it's just a lot you, of negativity you just got to go and wipe your history entirely mm. yeah. um, so full wipe you, yeah full wipe and just sort of be very di- yep. dil- diligent not to click on anything even slightly like just one of my one of the people I follow once mentioned Jordan Peterson and it took me three weeks yeah. to clean my thing to stop <laughs> there, getting Jordan Peterson stuff there was a channel I started watching it was a cooking channel uh-huh. which was this Canadian guy who gets like depression era recipes uh-huh. and he tries to make them <laughs> but boil then, those pork chops and veggie then, mate. that's what I know it's also a bit AMS, AMSR a, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. where there's just a, yeah, yeah, just a yeah, little bit of that like there's just like they have the eating and you can hear the sounds like they kind of get into that kind of that kind of and stuff and suddenly well. you're <laughs> listening to a three year old get their ears closed <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah, so the, the direction that vector um, sort of but it, weird, it's yeah. very positive and it's mainly about cooking things and then eating the thing and then talking about the thing and there's there's no like it's like trying to go for them clicks with the, with the negativity. Like that, that guy that does all the like the army ration. I've forgotten the word. Oh, the, he what, like what it opens called, just like eats all the, the old, old, old meal kit, <laughs> the ration meal kits. I've got a can lo- of cheese, military grade cheese that I got when I was like six, and it's still it's still in this house. It's probably still, it's probably still edible. <laughs> it's probably is. Yeah. I, I you wouldn't it. want to. My, yeah, but my deathbed is when this edible. cheese is <laughs> opened. Like, I was always one of those kids that. I get one of a thing, and so I would never use it. Like, um, you know, like the the bomb bags. Yeah. Oh, you'd squeeze them and they pop. Squeeze them, yeah. You know, it had a bit of vinegar and bicarbonate yeah. in it. I've never used a bomb bag because I only had one. <laughs> <laughs> and and you went into gaming. What a big surprise! It's the potion hoarding all That's over a, again. You're the it's reason a... they put hard limits on the number of potions you can have. <laughs> need... Otherwise, you're wasting them by not using. I need nine hundred and ninety-nine. No, you towns. get you get yeah. You get for the party's dead. for the last boss. <laughs> you get and then five. You don't use them. <laughs> every minor potion. Every... <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep them all. <laughs> Man, I do keep. A lot. I'm getting better at getting rid of shit, but I still keep a lot of just one-off things. Just like <laughs> I just thought that I need it. It's just like gonna what if you once. never get another one ever <laughs> again? Get another chance. <laughs> oh, I remember I was so proud when I had a uh, had a, like a parachute army man. Oh, I remember uh, those I, things. I like, threw him off a bridge. <laughs> I was like, God, oh, I've made I've made it's some gone. strides. Shit, can I get another one? <laughs> <laughs> that twenty cent army man. <laughs> James. That came with some lollies. James. <laughs> that, uh, before I threw that army man off a bridge, which I did on a date, weirdly enough, I'd had that army man for twelve years. Oh well, that's that's, that's baby oh. steps, man. Like you know, that, that's that's wow. good. That's you know. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna waste money on an army man. <laughs> I've got one. <laughs> what were we talking about? Video games. Okay. Um, you got to be more about the experience. 
Speaking of the experience, mm. what a what a generic segue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James and I have continued playing Wolfenstein Youngblood, oh, and we've been having a jolly old yeah. time. Yeah, it was fun times. So much so that I continually be confused at the vitriolic hate towards that game. Yeah, I, uh, thus far, and like I talk to a lot of people who uh-huh. just play games in general that aren't us. Yes. You two are the only two people I've met that have enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, there's, like, and I don't understand like, yeah. why. So here, I'll, I'll give you the worst shit about it. Okay, okay. Couple of bugs. Okay, here and there. you, you no, can't really first, play it once. First. By one person, it's going to suck. Yeah, it, it's a co-op game, 100%. <laughs> yeah. It's made for co-op. It's going to be boring without. So we get a mission, and it's got to go activate this laser. And we go to the laser, it says, Ah, you need a battery for this laser. So mm. yeah, go get the battery. It's like, now go back to the laser. <laughs> like, oh, that was a very interesting mission to yeah. <laughs> fetch quest <laughs> it's like, and, and there's like a loading screen in between the two areas you go to I'm like eh, this could have been this could have been streamlined the battery could have been next thing. to the laser <laughs> but, w- but what then a- we went and did the brother base oh and it was awesome yeah, yeah we did the first because there's it's basically Breath of the Wild you got to do yeah. the three three dungeons so we went and did the first dungeon and we had a fucking great yeah. time it was we awesome we took down that motherfucker yeah it had like <laughs> all huge. these and a big yeah. guy we took him down he was a skull too like I really enjoy the level design. Like it has that arcane quality of just lots of little pathways yeah. everywhere, and it's fun to explore. And the movement feels really good in the game. I mean, James and I quite enjoy the humor. Uh, I, mean, I don't. People don't like. Oh, I, don't know. I think it's funny. It's very weird that people don't like it. Yeah, it seems. It seems like these are very like they're down like, to earth. They like people. young girls. Like the kind of stuff they're saying and doing. I just like. Yeah, like, I mean, they're tomboyish yeah. girls. Is that wrong? Yeah. Like, apparently, Paul. Apparently. <laughs> apparently, it is. I mean, they were raised <laughs> by fucking BJ. Yeah. Not my be- Wolfenstein, Paul. Um, well, see, that's the thing. The, the biggest argument I hear against it mm-hmm. is that uh, I just want a single player Wolfenstein but story. It's, it's but like, that's not what it is. It's, yeah. yeah, that's that's my thing. It's, like, I, it's not that. Stop trying to and I think, rate it as if it was. I think the worry like, is that because of this, they'll, Wolfenstein 3 won't be either. Uh, but uh, it's a spin off. Yeah, it's a cheap why would they made with the same it's, assets it's not, primarily. It's not full price. Like it's yeah, it's like whilst whilst it actually like it kind of makes me want like uh, here, here was the here was the pitch in my head. Okay, so not necessarily Wolfenstein, but this same sort of thing. Open world, no loading screens in between, just a big thing that just streams out and everything. First person action, Dark Souls. Sure. Where so you're in this city, it's like okay, so you go and save, savings going up to a radio, mm. but radio informs the enemy, so they all go back to their positions and stuff. You could have patrols coming in and out, all this stuff, just running missions through and everything. Like, but you know, with this fantastic parkour stuff and everything, like it's basically dying light, yeah. but you know, but with that more a little bit more and well Wolfenstein's gunplay style of it, and a little mm. bit more of that storytelling and satirical element to it, I guess. It's like, oh, oh, if that was like not Wolfless. If I was Youngblood 2 and it was that and then we're able to push the technology more mm. in that direction, I'd be like, ooh, I'd, be, I'd, buy, I'd buy that now. Yeah. I'd pre-order it now. I'm like, yeah, I'm down. This but will be great. But not going to make that game. No, I, I, <laughs> I doubt this is... Well, actually, it's hard to know sales-wise. Mm. I mean, what... People get angry that they... You're right. Like the that, internet is not... Indica- you're right. Like, that, that is something it's, it's easy to forget. Like, yeah. there are a lot of very loud voices there who are, are actually I mean, a very small part The one of, I always bring up yeah. is um, uh, Sean Murray talking about the returns on Steam of No Man's Sky. Hmm. And like, oh, there must have been pretty high returns. Like, no, not above normal numbers. Most of the people complaining probably didn't buy it. Mm. Yeah, and it, <laughs> and then uh, so today that's uh, some news too. Actually, No Man's Sky. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, the oh, new is stuff that, coming is that out tomorrow. I think uh, it is 18th. Might be, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. VR, VR, and, MMO, oh. major like virgin wow. bump overhaul. It's up, to, it's up to 32 people, I think now per server. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Um, and apparently, the VR is actually really good like I want to see what the PlayStation VR port. is like there yeah. <laughs> well I, I was reading an article on actually um, and they were talking about how like they ported VR into it did a quick test and was like well everything we've built in this game is at the wrong scale yeah because <laughs> <laughs> it's like it looks great the inside of a ship looks incredible but then you put it on a VR headset and you realise it's not the right size. Yeah, everything looks weird. So yeah. they've had to rescale most of the stuff what, in the game. What I, interesting to see. Which yeah. makes it look better outside of VR as well. What I want to know is that Sean Murray, he, he briefly mentioned about redoing the controls in an IG yes. interview. And I, I, I hope there's Hotas support. I don't know oh, if that's going to happen. Was. He, just, he, was, he was very vague. He just there said, were a lot of... He's like, oh, we, we, you want to put your hands on the joystick? He's like, well, well, hold on there, fella. <laughs> There's a lot of talk about how like they're using a lot of like 
natural gestures mm. in place of buttons and controls and stuff when it comes to the VR stuff. Mm. So like getting out of your ship, you're phys- you, yeah. you physically lift the. Yeah, I heard it was a very interactive cockpit, cockpit and everything. You know, like interacting that. with items is actually like reaching out and then pulling back yeah. from it and, and stuff like that, rather than just point and hit a button. Mm. So it's, they definitely have ported it. Just gone. It's in VR mm. and press buttons. So mm. it seems yeah. like they put a lot. They put of a lot of into, into it. it from what I've heard. Yeah. But yeah, yeah um, be interesting to see how it is. Mm. So Terry Kavanaugh and posting about Darcy Dungeons today was like, "Hey, we're number one on Steam," and he's like, "Oh, I, I realize my list is regional," and tried to work out the, the to find the overall list, and they were still like number four. Hey, it's very cool. Good. After No Man's Sky, mm. <laughs> it's like yeah, the internet's yeah. loud. It's not necessarily indicative no. of sales. Mm. Like No Man's Sky is done very fucking well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So anyway, the, the young blood, yeah. I have fun, and, and the other thing that people complain about is like the fact that there's microtransactions in it. Yeah, which I, I don't understand. I've seen I, absolutely no reason. For I've them. looked no. at what they are and went, oh, okay. <laughs> the the, the, sure. the in-game currency and scaling and being able to purchase upgrades, like we like we've done one tower. I've already bought the most expensive upgrade there is. Yeah, right. Um, and then it's like, yeah, I can't upgrade literally everything. But that's because it's a game, and you got to make your choice. <laughs> you got to prioritize. Know, it's, it's almost boring like, if you could. It's yeah. almost like they expected there to be two people and those people could just specialize <laughs> in two different, different things, things. Yeah. instead of one person <laughs> doing everything yes yeah, yeah, yeah. it's almost it's, like that it's almost yeah. like it's a co-op game yeah yeah. 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 James is the stealthy one and I'm the one that likes to smash things with <laughs> my butt <laughs> although he's not very stealthy he James just walks into room nice and stabs man. everything yeah, yeah I'm, I'm getting real good at stabbing it's Nike McStabby face Stabby, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah not normally yeah. cloaked just stabbing yeah yeah <laughs> well throwing knives in this game is they're, they're but, brutal let us stop talking nice things about Wolfenstein and start okay. talking bad things What's about science. So I also de- uh, bought, because I was enjoying Youngblood so much, Wolfenstein Cyberpilot. Oh. The VR experience <laughs> that has been several years in the making. Yeah. Oh boy. This will be fun. Wolfenstein's a bunch of fun. I would expect it to this be very be bombastic. Silly. Yeah. Now, I can't speak too much because apparently you can pilot three things in the game and I just didn't want to continue playing. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll be back one day. So, uh, you start off... Um, you're, you're in a base and you get to be in a lovely moving chair around because they can't think of any good locomotion for you, but that's fine. And eventually they go like, ah, yes, so we built the base vertical, so you could just use this elevator to go up and down. I'm like, why not? This is fine. So I go down to the um, go down to the garage. It's, this is the tutorial. At this point, I've listened to a bunch of dialogue, which I've tuned out of. And it's like, okay, now here you are. And next to me, there's some, some disks and a crowbar and a screwdriver. And I can pick up the disk and put it in the thing. But when I pick up the disk, the physics sort of knock the crowbar off the table. That's all right, whatever. Okay, they bring down a cyber hound, the big metal mm. dogs. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, we've got we've to open it up and change its programming so you can control it. Like, okay, that's pretty cool. Bring it down with a virtual joystick. Bring it in front of me. Got the panel. It's like, now pop open the panel. I'm like, okay. What's this crowdriver? Um, like you're above a void. <laughs> there's no ground like, okay well there's a screwdriver I'll just jam the screwdriver in it's like this tool won't work blah, 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 blah. Um, so the crowbar didn't respawn uh, cr- like I'm just pushed like hitting it rotating mm. just it's like okay uh, what if I leave the area and come back I zzz, up come back down zzz. I don't know they've remembered everything's position thank you game <laughs> um, so I had to restart the fucking oh, game oh wow <laughs> I'm like, and I'm just here with, the, I'm working at the computer, I've just put the headset on the floor. And I'm just like, I'm like uh-huh. And everyone, you had to nod a few times, so I'd run over and just pick up the helmet and go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it, hell, you didn't even save at the beginning of that section. Mm. I had to go back to the beginning of the game. Fuck. So anyway, you get into the actual game and you're like, you're, you're, I'm doing the cyber hound. And okay, so you, go, you can breathe fire and you can run into things. So here is the level of detail and thought they put in this game. You start off in a tunnel. Now, uh, it's got snap turning, so it's set Mm -hmm. to 30 degrees. Mm. All the tunnels turn at 90 degrees. Fine, 90 is Mm. 330s, whatever. Yeah, but you don't start looking straight down a tunnel. You start turning at about 15 degrees. Which means with the default controls, you can never walk fucking straight down a tunnel. You're always going <laughs> diagonal, diagonal, diagonal. And Aww. sure, I could go into the options and change to 15, hit it once, go back, change it to 30. You've got a zigzag pull. Oh, yeah, it's zigzag yeah. fucking everywhere. <laughs> but the fact that I need to... <laughs> <laughs> got a strafe in, in case a crocodile comes after you. It's so minor. <laughs> it's petty, but it's also just indicative no. of the level of detail put towards this game. I, mm-hmm. I, they often have fences that you can't walk through but you can't jump in the game but you're like 
just lunge at it and you just sort of clip through it and that's how you that's how they like gate off going back in a level but how <laughs> there's no damage to the fence I didn't do a jump over it you they faced. just said oh, I just faced fucking through it a big giant dog yeah. and I just uh, I don't there'd just be points where I'd just suddenly like you can be surprisingly squishy and then other times you're just walking around and you're a god and I don't know the difference <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like there's an interesting development story here <laughs> yeah like probably that. yeah I mean, rule, um, rule number one of VR dev: if an object is interactable, your player is going to throw it across the room. So make sure it respawns. Yeah, exa- exa- exactly. Yeah. So if they fail at that one, like you'd have like a, a toolbox button or a reset button or yeah, something some should kind of, be there. Just have it respawn so at the, the very least. The dropping the crowbar and the not being at the correct angle to look down a fucking tunnel <laughs> yeah. just made me think like no one's no one's done any like valuable QA on this no. game. It's like. They just had to ship something. They're told one week after Youngblood, we've got to get this yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they started making it the same day they released Youngblood. So it was a very, very short period. No. <laughs> and it is one of like, and obviously I'm just taking the piss there, but it is like all the resources are shared between Wolfenstein mm. to Youngblood. And like there's a lot of the same mm. resources that's making these games. That's why they're cheaper. And they still like have high quality models and everything. And even with that, it's like, God, just get the fucking basics down. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes I could I ram a ram a big robot and it gets knocked back. But most of the time I just phase through behind it. Which in a VR game, if you've run through something, then it's 30 degrees. So that's six pushes to turn around <laughs> all the way. But, but Paul, <laughs> Youngblood is the one that's ruined Wolfenstein. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, no one gives a fuck about Cyberpilot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, lo- I like Youngblood a lot. Cyberpilot can fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I should have tried to get a restart, a, re- a, re- a, re- a fucking refund on P- on PlayStation. I've never asked for a refund on anything. And it really made me angry. <laughs> it got you almost to that point, did it? Yeah. I was like, this is not... This is not well considered. <laughs> I should find out what the next thing I pilot is and see if I can do any better with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I want something with a gun. It's also just got a weird thing like... You aim with one mm. hand and you sort of drive forward by pushing the other one, but it's, it's strange mm. designs. Um, so, do you have a copy of No Man's Sky? No. So, you should probably grab time... my copy. Because then you can play the VR version, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Are you not going to play the PlayStation I'll play version? I'll it on PC. Oh, yeah, I'll have your yeah. copy. That's, that's, that's the 10 hours I put into No Man's Sky was yep. your copy anyway. Yes. Because when it was coming out, everyone's like, we need to buy this. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. And then nope. James Lynch, you were like done within two days. So you can have it fall for a yeah. while. And then I'm like, oh, I quite like this game. Yeah. At, <laughs> but at, 10 hours was enough for I me. I bought it. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. And then the patch came out and I had a lot more fun with it. Well, and that's then the patch came out and I had a lot more fun with it. I, I, I've always stood by like the... the just don't, no, no Man's just Sky. don't buy into hype. And it's fine. Yeah, No Man's Sky was always... was it's What it was was always kind of obvious to you if you paid... The right kind of attention to yeah. it. I think No Man's Sky would have bothered me less if it wasn't a full priced game at least. Yeah, like yeah. If, if if I paid like forty bucks for it, I would have been like, oh yeah, it's a cool like, the, little tech demo thing where you can o- go look at some stuff. The only justification, it's not a good justification uh, for its price, is the long term support ended mm. up making it worth it. Oh, they have now hundred percent. It's worth it now. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Sure. It was at, not worth that at launch. At, no, it was a twenty no, game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I so impressed. By uh, uh, Hello, Hello it is Soft. Hello, what was called Hello, Hello Games. Hello Games. Hello Games. Yeah, yeah. Hello. so impressed with what they've done with that title. And, and, like, if I was in Sean Murray's position, I think I would have bailed. I would have been like, run. "Nah, I'm out." <laughs> Just burn it, run, go yeah. live in the woods. Yeah. But as I say, yeah. like Steam sales still really mm. high. Like, it, you might just want to like turn off the internet but... or oh, maybe that's <laughs> well, what they he, did I think, he did go they? very pretty, dark pretty, he went dark for like yeah. two years so yeah. maybe it's just like you know what let's just ignore that they, sector they basically yeah. locked themselves in their dev offices yeah. and yeah. just got to work on fixing mm. it yeah. but like, which you know, is the better right? it's yeah. like, well, I guess like, it is It is very easy around. to forget and we'll talk about it a little bit before but it's very easy to forget just like how small core gamer is in mm. the greater scheme of things of gaming as a whole and so it probably was, um, yeah, like a really good move on his part. Like, if this is like a small part of what the broader gaming community is, because you can see it from the sales, it's like, well, how about I just ignore that part? Yeah. Focus in on this for a while. A lot of people around here like it. They're playing it a lot. We can see the numbers. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. you've got a thousand people abusing you every day. That's pretty overwhelming. But you look at the numbers and there's two million people playing it. It's like, who gives a fuck about two yeah. th- a thousand yeah. people? That's the thing, right? Like, anyone who's enjoying the game is playing it not commenting that they're enjoying and also the game. most people just don't give a crap about drama online mm. 
Um, people won't leave reviews or comments or just anything unless it's bad most yeah, of the time. Yeah, exactly. Which is why like the Good Fish and Chip shop I was going to had one review from eight years ago which said there was a cockroach in my <laughs> chips yeah. despite the fact it was different ownership. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new store. Yeah, but that one review exists still. <laughs> Um, okay, so other things. So, James, both you and I have played Metal Wolf Chaos. Oh, XD. yes. XD, XD, yes. XD. Um, what was your experience like, Paul? So, Metal Wolf Chaos XD, James and I have spoken about on the show before because yep. we played it at PAX last year and it was potentially, it's only up there, but potentially our favorite game of the show. I had a good, was, very good time with it at PAX. I had mm, fun times. We had laughs, a, a, a dozen Yep. <laughs> um, and it was good fun. So, we both had less fun with the final game. Mm-hmm. And there's a major reason for this. So, the PAX demo had all these wacky weapons up lo- unlocked for you to use. But when you start the game at the same level we played it there, you've like, just got... A shotgun. Just shotgun and, and a machine gun, machine gun and a and rocket. A, and a rocket launcher with a limited None ammo. of the wacky stuff. It's like, oh, the story's still wacky. Yeah. The story's, so, the, so, you're the president. Yeah. And you've got your big red, <laughs> big robot yeah. suit. You're, and you're bringing freedom. I do. Yeah. Everyone. I do enjoy the progress of yeah. this game. Oh, it's, it's it's so it's good. Wonderful. And, and then like um, so you basically the vice president's taken over in a coup, and he's got his own big metal robot suit. <laughs> and you go to like San Francisco to liberate people, and then you get framed for the greatest terrorist yeah. event of all time, <laughs> done by the president, and all this yeah. stuff. It's very fun, and it's like. American uh, politics is weird at the moment, <laughs> but this is fine. This is so, yeah, so really this is perfectly the, normal. <laughs> all of the the stuff I loved about the thematics from PAX are all there. Yeah, it's just unfortunately, I'm playing a game from well, what 15 years ago now. Just quite a while. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and mechanically, it it doesn't really age well. I think the more you, the better you make the weapons, the more fun it is. Because mm. at the moment, there's just a lot of like, well. This thing has to take sort of blunt force weapons and I've just got a shotgun, which isn't very powerful. So I'm just going to sit in front of it and just let 10 shots yeah. ring into it. And I'm not doing anything. I'm not really taking any damage. I'm just going to hold and fire there for a well, while. So, and that's not very exciting. So there was like, I think the end of the second level, near uh-huh. the end, they're like, you walk, walk up to a building and it's like, hey, you yeah. destroy the building. And I'm thinking, oh, this sounds fun. Like, are you want me to blow up a building? And it gives it brings up all these targets you have to kill. But you have to actually shoot each one of them. <laughs> and it got really boring. Because I'm just there like, oh, I guess I've just got to unload into this building until all the, the things are destroyed. And then a tank comes. And if you don't, don't have any missiles left, <laughs> you're a bit screwed. So this is from these two stories that James told me. I realized he had not invested in a flamethrower, which eats through that tank in yeah. like five seconds. <laughs> And also works really well on the building. But also <laughs> swarm missiles on the building. Oh, mwah, takes yeah. it out really fast. But that's the thing. It's like, you don't know that before you do the level. No, yeah. You also, at that point, they haven't really explained because there's a whole... You get currency from the missions and you can send that on upgrades and there's also a research section to open new types of weapons um, and then you can upgrade the existing weapons to be more powerful and stuff like that. So you can customize a lot but it doesn't really make you do that. So you can just go into the next level with just the basic shit still. Which I did. And <laughs> it's so boring. Yeah. I I would love for this game to be not a remaster, but just basically a remake. Well, it is a remake. They sort of made a point. Of, it just looks like a remaster. Yeah. It's pretty much from the ground up, but it's just made to... Remake. I guess like redesigned is what redesigned. I mean. A little bit more redesigned yeah, to modernized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, would lo- modernized I, I would love it to yeah, keep that tone, keep the writing... Keep all like the basic thing. I mean, the mech. Yeah. But yeah, modernize the gameplay. Make make the mech. I think it'd be amazing. Make the mech movement a little bit more like fun to just move around, have it smashing through shit, whatever. Um, and then just like just play into the wacky weapons. Mm. Like we, I think one of the guns at Pax just shot money out. <laughs> and then like that sounds was, about right. Uh, there was oh, there was lots of like silly things. I feel like if you have it. a premise as wacky as it is. You got to start with wacky weapons. At least, at least like, having like one or two wacky. It's an absolutely crazy crap. Yeah, give us. But give, here's a regular give gun. Us some ratchet and clank <laughs> disco balls or armed and dangerous shark guns and shit like that. Oh man, the yeah. land shark. Everyone <laughs> loves the land shark. It's it's hard to recommend. Yeah, because it's it's just. But oh oh, you, you continue for a second. Yeah, it's just out. it's just it's so dated in the way it plays, mm-hmm. and it's it's not like say like I could recommend say someone playing Tony Hawk. Yeah. It's like, you know, there's something timeless about that. Like, I think you can still play in the modern day. This one, not it's not so a very much. good shooter. Like, the 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 writing and that, that, all that stuff's amazing. It doesn't look that good. 
Like, hmm. So I, I don't know like how this thing's going to go. I mean, apart mm. from having the From Software yeah. like, at the beginning, and that'll it probably... It does have a, a fairly decent fan following too, as okay. far as I'm aware. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people that were very happy that they were doing mm. it. Um, but enough, but again, enough to justify... Again, it's that little minority <laughs> yeah, bubble, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. enough to, for it to get to make money, I don't know. Okay, so I was almost about to say, except for... But they don't. They don't have cheat codes. The game oh. needs cheat codes. Yes, it does. It needs to be to replace all the soldiers with clowns. A game that old should have cheat codes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's great. That people What's just say, like, "Oh, just use this trainer to get unlimited money." It's like, yeah. No, that's not what I want. <laughs> I want wacky cheat mm. codes. I-, I want button presses that do stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want. I want a. I want a sniper rifle that just boils people alive. <laughs> <laughs> is is Rockstar like the last bastion of of, of cheat, cheat codes? codes? Like, I mean, at least in like the AAA. Does Rockstar still have cheat codes? Well, I mean, GTA 5 does. GTA does. I don't know if um, Red Dead... They I don't think in, Red Dead does. But they, I'm pretty sure GTA 5 had lots of five crazy... 5 does. Crazy ones. Five's like, got the usual GTA button combination yeah. cheats. I did it. Okay. I yeah. thought it, I thought it had some sort of like wacky mode you could put in like a menu, but I didn't know it had cheats. That's cool. I don't think there's anything else that comes to mind at all. There's still games them cheat codes. Does. Yeah. <sighs> oh, thing, Iron, like Fury. The, the Iron Fury. Iron right? Fury has like, an option to put in cheat codes. Of course it does. Yes. But yeah, <laughs> I just bring up the console and <laughs> yeah, it's part of the engine, right? <laughs> it's built in. <laughs> um, okay, bloop 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 bloop. Uh, the game I, I briefly mentioned earlier. Um, I got the Switch version of Rogue Singularity today. Oh yeah. Uh, it was code provided. Um, I think it comes out in a couple of days. Uh, I just wanted to see how it runs. So Rogue Singularity is an Aussie-made game. It's basically just platforming in abstract space with a bunch of um, collecting coins and unlocking different... Uh, um, well, not just body parts, but basically different uh, core power-ups for your movement. So you start off with a hover, but you get like bounce things. And mm. It's been a while since i played it. I've mainly played it like, on live setting and everything. Uh, the Switch version so far seems to run really smoothly. Uh, I had a little jitter in the intro, but other than that, the actual levels run really smooth. It's responsive. I just kind of wish the camera was a little bit closer in handheld mode, mm-hmm. but it'd be the same camera when you would use it on PC or... Because I think it's on console as well now. I'm not I think sure. it is, yeah. Um, yeah, so the Switch port seems fine. Um, I'll probably play a little bit because I always actually... It was one of those things that was pretty much at every event I went to for like four years. Mm. And so I got to play a really early version <laughs> of it and I just got to see it change every year. I was like... Oh, I'm gonna just go have some fun for a little yeah. bit. It's like, because I, I, I know, especially last time at PAX, it was maybe it was like late on the last day and like no one was at the booth. I'm like, I'm just gonna play some. It's just fun. <laughs> it's a fun game. It's just wasting time. It's, yeah, it's not exactly yeah. deep. It's just like, yeah, some good time. And what I like is that it's a little bit like, did you play a Hat in Time? Yes. So Hat in Time is good, but I don't think it's a good Mario game because. No, yeah. Unfortunately, I, I played it. Almost right after I finished Odyssey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> interesting combination. Because yeah. much like had time, one of the things you could just do all the time is look. There's some obstacles in front of me, but if I run and jump, I could just jump yeah. over <laughs> all of them. Just bypass, <laughs> bypass so like, everything. Oh, there's a lot of spinning things, but there's nothing spinning in the air. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's a lot of level design that you can just get past. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, I think uh, Hadn't Time is coming to Switch soon too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually interested after because um, they've added some more stuff since I last played it, and I found out. So here's a little hot scoop. You might notice that we often we get review code and we try to tell you when we get review code. So I got review code to Hadn't Time, and I wanted to check out the latest update. See, because I want. Oh, is the DLC included in that? I'll just buy the DLC if mm. I need to. They revoked the, d- the review codes. Oh. It happens sometimes, James. I don't know if you go back and check. Oh. <laughs> I've got a few games that are, that are no just like, there. like, oh, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, well, do I buy it again on PC or do I? Wait do I switch. get this on Switch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, we can get free things, but sometimes... They take them away. take them away, <laughs> which is fair. Yeah. Which is fine. It's like, it. If it's a it's year true. later yeah. and you haven't put yeah. up a... F- like, you've done your yeah. review. Yeah. The yeah. review is done. done. You don't now. need it. It's just, I'm surprised someone would go to the effort. I think something will sort of automate it. Yeah, or maybe it's just like a temporary yeah. thing on your account. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I, I know a few people, that, like, they've, like, they'll use sort of more the beta strands mm. and everything and stuff like that. It'll be very specifically labeled as review. Mm. Um Oh, it's fine. I'm not going to complain about it. <laughs> it's just surprising sometimes. Yeah. It's like, espe- oh, especially when you want to go mind. check out a patch so you can comment on it or something. It's like, oh, I've heard they've been doing some good work. I want, to- oh, guess not. <laughs> oh, well. Guess I'm not talking about that. Moving on. <laughs> but then they go like, ah, 
I bet I've got this at a humble since then. <laughs> <laughs> Five keys. <laughs> Here we go. Man, gaming's so cheap. It's great. Um, we actually, I think, are pretty much done. Hmm. Anything we're talk missing, through, friends? Talk through our things. I, and uh, quite a few, I think it may have just gone up recently on, on Netflix, but Mat- Matrix was on Netflix. Oh, did you rewatch it? Oh, we watched The oh. Matrix. How's the rewatch? That movie is fucking good. It is. It's it is. Um, I was just, I was paying closer attention. I suppose because when I first watched it, I was a teenager. Mm. I have seen it since, but didn't really pay attention that much. It's like the cinematography is so fucking good. Mm. It's like, yeah, you can certainly see like all the anime inspiration mm. and everything there. And then we watched the next two. Uh-huh. Oh boy. And how was that? Those movies are still fucking terrible. <laughs> ah, really bad. <laughs> it's amazing how far they fell. It's, uh, yeah. it's such a flip. It's yeah. crazy, isn't it? It's like, an immediate flip almost. What happened? I feel like there's a documentary there I, I i feel like they when they were doing it they had such a view of the whole multimedia what the sequel's going to be it's like it's not just two movies oh it's, it's a game it's, and it's it's, a, it's multiple the games anime it's series. the, the, the anime yeah. Yeah. and, and the animatrix right. is very good yeah, yeah. Mm. um like it's all this stuff together and the actual storytelling was a very low priority mm. <laughs> like what can like what can we do because it's like you look at the fights and the fights have like some really awesome shots in the fight, but the fight is hollow and meaningless. Mm. Um, it's like, like okay, the, the hundred man fight where he just flies away at the end. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and that one doesn't even look that great. But like, there's a, when they're in like the palace and there's the, they're fighting on the staircase and like someone's running along the back wall. There's a big mm. slow mo shot. Some really cool stuff. Oh, going it's on. like oh, what a fucking beautiful it's shot. So it's pointless. like I don't care about this fight <laughs> at all. You forgot to give me a reason to give a shit, um, which is very important in storytelling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so I speak of, give us a reason to give a shit. Watch Hobbs and Shaw. Oh, boy. Oh, yes. Fucking incredible. <laughs> As it should be. It was. I mean, some of the. Some I was of, expecting nothing less from that movie. Some of the cameos would be spoilers to put in <laughs> there, but um, it's just. It is exactly what it says it is. It yeah. is as ludicrous and. And I, I decided. I, I, I really hate people calling films like dumb. Because it's not dumb. It knows exactly what it's mm. doing. It's very competently ridiculous. Made. Is the better it's word? Ridic- I like playful. Playful is a good mm. word. I think it's yeah. an extremely playful film. Um, I think a lot of people look at those movies. It's like all the Fast and Furious franchise because they started off trying to do something very serious. Yeah, yeah. Like they started it was, off like it was like yeah, this is a serious street <laughs> racing film. <laughs> the idea that this is even just, related to that. Yeah. Is so- <laughs> Ever so slowly, just started building up to crazier and crazier and crazier shit, and now we've got this spinoff that's just. Full sci-fi, basically. I mean, like, there it is. It's a superhero movie, kind of. (laughs) It's very much a superhero movie. (laughs) Uh, I mean, big spoiler: there are no Coronas. Uh, (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) It's a family poll. Yeah, they talk talk about family. um, It's just like the the only thing I guess is just I I wish they did a little bit let the action scenes are cut a little too fast. Need to slow down the the Mm. the editing a little bit, just and also just. Maybe just make the set pieces a little bit more actually doing it and a little bit less CGI because mm. I just tune out when it gets to a certain yeah. point. You don't need to, you get too crazy and just like, nah, I'll bring it back. Unless you're going to go like Batman the movie crazy, <laughs> bring it back a little bit. <laughs> See, the thing is, I came out of the last Fast and the Furious uh-huh. and the one thought I had coming out of the movie, other than that was ridiculous, is I would pay a lot of money to see an entire movie of just The Rock and Jason Statham. Oh, yeah, of course. And then they did it. <laughs> well, the last face of Dream Come the True was supposed to end with the preview for this. Ah, oh, okay. But, the, um, but uh, Vin Diesel wouldn't stand for it. Because he's like... Because it wasn't family. Well, yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> it, it was taking the focus of family, like literally with yeah. that. But also, like, he's, their egos don't really match up. Um, he just needs to go... Uh, apparently, he's doing another Riddick. He just needs to stick <laughs> with Riddick. Yeah. <laughs> he's good in Riddick. Yeah, I like him in Riddick. Yeah, and... He needs to fund some more video games because they were pretty good too. Yeah. Did you ever watch the last Witch Hunter of his? I did not. No. Should it I? Is, it's not a good movie. Was that the one based on his D and D character? Yeah, yeah. It's based on his D and D character. He went. You know what? I want to make a movie about my D and D character, and then they did. <laughs> <laughs> I should do so the same a, thing. It's actually an incredible watch, but it's not a good movie. <laughs> Get ready for Eric De Cleric. <laughs> The story of the world's greatest See, bard. Vin, Vin Diesel. <laughs> Vin Diesel is surprisingly one of those people that sits very much in the realm of anything past the original Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is shit. All the additions since, they don't. Oh, count. he's like like an he's, elitist. He's the elitist old school D and D player. Oh, Jesus. And it's like Vin Vin Diesel is what? 
I wouldn't but play apparently any Ma- Smash. Meryl Streep is the same. Melee. Okay. Meryl Streep wouldn't play past Fest Festival Edition Dungeons of and Dragons. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. D and D elitist. None of this D twenty bullshit. It's Thaco, <laughs> yeah. and that's it. I still don't understand Thaco. I'm, I'm so happy that I've got over most of my elitism. I won't say it's not all there. It's all gone. I'm got a bit, and I like to play with it. There's a lot yeah. of it. I like to pretend more yeah. elitism than I actually have. Well, when I did bring uh, up my phone before, mm. you made a very kind of like royal what are you doing about about android you're like well we've oh, had did this I? yeah yeah you, you, you got, you, you, <laughs> what was it about this, this, it was about the um uh do not disturb mode you're like oh, oh yeah. we've had this oh that must have just there been was, a weird inflection that must have <laughs> been on android for like, years like, oh, paul cares about this <laughs> <laughs> no, I, when you pull out your phone i was just gonna make a comment about cheryl but it was too weird i was, I was like, like oh you've got cheryl on your phone i'm like well of course he would <laughs> <laughs> It's like, maybe that just translated into the, into the next <laughs> sentence I said. Some weird picking on James for no reason. Which is one of my favourite reasons to pick on James. <laughs> the emotion came up and you had to divert uh, it yeah, yeah, yeah. into it's a like, different sentence. Well, we've had Do Not Disturb mode for years! <laughs> <laughs> but we've only just got Zen mode. Let's Whatever find, the hell that I don't is. Know what Zen mode Let's is. find out what Zen mode is. It just is. turns your phone off. God, I <laughs> hope that's it. <laughs> <laughs> just deletes everything. Like, oh, thanks. Well, thanks yeah, it, it just puts up a picture of a waterfall. Oh, I actually wouldn't be surprised if it locked you from using your phone for some time. It might time. be. Let's it find could, out. It could so actually be on like mode. forced timeout. Mm. I'm, I'm for that. Z- is it- that literally is what we just guessed. It's yeah. a forced timeout. Yeah, Zen mode on OnePlus for smartphones will essentially lock you out of using your phone for 20 minutes. Wow. Good. Yeah, sure. Nice. I need to install it on my last phone. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to force her to watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my screen, not your screen. <laughs> I'm basically my dog. <laughs> Attention, please. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Second screen experience is important. Okay, um, shall we call that a, a game, so, yeah. a match? Let's do it. Okay, thank you for watching and listening to 8.5 Bit. You can catch our website, 8.5bit.com, our Twitter and Facebook. Please like and share anything like that. Subscribe to us on whatever the hell you want. Uh, you can join our Discord. We're not doing live on Discord at the moment, but we might again later if we can sort we can it out. out. Yeah, make it work. Uh, I've been your host, Paul. I've been Sam. And I've been James. And I'll catch you all later, folks. See you, everyone. <laughs>